Come on. You can do it, YouTube. There we go. And great. Okay. It's a little different than it is over in Twitch land, I'll tell you what. <clears throat> Howdy. I hope you're doing well. Happy time of day to you, no matter where you are. Uh, Colin Max says, good afternoon from Scotland. Terrain from Mantic's Terrain Crate is good. They do make very good terrain. I like their stuff. I think I get a little closer here. Greetings from London. Uh, I've been trying out Slice and Slot system from Microforge. Not heard of that. Cool. Hello from Kansas. Um, Rhode Island, painting heavy gear Caprice mounts today. Hmm. Capmaster, how you doing? I have to say my new favorite to find is Gamer Grass in their products. Nice. Yeah, I, I bought some of those, uh, the pre-painted fancy bases at um, LVO. And I'm going to have to give those a, a try. Um, St. Albans, UK. UK. Texas. Uh, Edinburgh, Scotland. Ottawa. Central Ohio. Historical Gamer saying hello. How you doing? Um, good morning from New uh, North Carolina. YouTube has been acting like my students today. Doesn't want to work. Oh, that's a bummer. Um, Quebec, another Quebec. Looks like Frank and Dragonfire should hang out together. Um, I mean, I'm, you don't necessarily live right next to each other. I get it. Uh, let's see here. Um, abnormal yet enjoyable warm Houston, Texas. Yeah, it's going to be a high of almost 50 today and almost 60 tomorrow. So, uh, it's gonna be kind of crazy. Uh, hello from a suddenly snowy West Virginia. I have an old pencil case full of Jenga blocks. So that's fun. Um, Spring Lake, North Texas, Columbus, Ohio, Kent, England. Tricky time when you start feeling better and you know that two hours before uh, hobbying in the 60 degree basement is a bad idea. Well, yeah, I know what you mean. JP Got Rockets coming in on a steel horse. There you go. Fungazi, how you doing? From uh, chilly Washington, D.C. Um, good morning from Cleveland. Painting some flesh eater quartz this morning. Nice. Coastal North Carolina, Georgia. Uh, nice groundhog saw his shadow. Tennessee would really love terrain that looked like Gotham City or Arkham. Yeah, I. They make the. Uh, there's a Batman miniature game, right? You would think that they would make some terrain for that, but terrain can be kind of expensive to produce. In like you know, unless it's maybe like. There are certain things like um. Oh gosh, uh, laser cut MDF that is relatively reasonable. Um. You would think even STLs, that they could sell STLs and then people could take those and then print them themselves and make cool goth Gotham buildings or whatever. I don't know. Um, good morning from a nice... Oh, I saw that. Uh, looking forward to a warm day with nothing planned so I can finally do some priming. Nice. Yeah, I'm hoping to be able to, on Tuesday, do some priming myself because the terrain that we're going to be using for Tanks for the Apocalypse at uh, Adepticon... I believe is all finished now. So I'm probably going to be picking it up for my friend Dave today, hopefully. And then um, tomorrow I can spend some time getting it ready for priming. Uh, there's probably some places I'm going to have to replace some textures and glue down sand and stuff like that, but nothing big. Um, and then <clears throat> hopefully on Tuesday I can I can at least give it a, a, a nice, a, a simple coat of primer so that if I have to go back and airbrush prime it, at least the airbrush primer will have something a little better to stick to. That's the, that's the hope. So that'd be perfect if we had a, a day of nearly 60 degree temperature for reasons in, you know, late February, like one does. The only downside is I've got like several different things I've got to do on Tuesday as well, but we'll see. Uh, let's see here. Um, Gilbert, Arizona, Rosetta, Pennsylvania, Isle of, the Isle of Wight. How you doing? Allison Silverhair. Howdy. Um, Wales, uh, Virginia, just got a set of Monument Hobbies brushes. Cool. Dungeon and Lasers has fun terrain. Yeah, they do. Uh, well, wait, is that the same thing as Archon Studios? Are those the same people? Because the Archon Studios terrain is really good. Um, I wish that you could get it outside of their Kickstarter. You know what I mean? Um, I wish you could get the urban stuff outside their Kickstarter. Because the urban stuff is some of the best terrain I've ever I've ever uh, had the, the the pleasure of using. Good morning from the Big Lake up north. There you go. Uh, painting some Umber Ravagers. Deep cut gaming mats are the best. Nice. Good afternoon from Denmark. How you doing, Torben? Happy to see people are getting their Fnatic pre-order already, but already uh, extremely sad I'm not one of them. Wow, no kidding. Already. 
See, I thought it wasn't supposed to come till mid March, but I suppose, you know, shipping is shipping and who knows. Uh, prepping terrain for Fallout Wasteland. Hello from KCMO. How you doing? Oop, everything moved. Um, Isle of Wight, KCMO. There we go. Uh, afternoon from Gloucestershire. I don't think I pronounced that properly. Uh, how you doing? Ordering Stargrave minis for Space Station Zero and Majestic 13. Waiting for Majestic 13 to come in the mail. Nice. Well, I'm glad to hear it. Uh, hello from Valley, Valley Forge, PA. Whitby, Ontario. Another fan of Mantic Terrain from Toledo, Ohio. Uh, American Fork, Utah. How you doing? Hudson, Wisconsin. Good news. I visited my FLGS and they've massive expanded their hobby section. Vallejo Game Colors, Pro Acryl. Uh, tons of new basing from many different brands. It's great to see. Yeah, that is good. That's that's always real nice. Uh, hello. Howdy from Wisconsin. How you doing? Noon from Cloudy, but always lovely Porto. How you doing? Uh, let's see here. West Midlands, Australia. Brazil, currently working on some Perry French. Nice. I have some, do I have some Perry French in the basement? I think so. I think I bought a box of the, I think there's French in there because I was going to use them for um, the kit bashes and stuff like that for, you know, potentially turn up 28, but more likely now, most likely Swill, which is the kind of more skirmish style game that he's going to be making uh, or he's in the process of making. Uh, the turn up 28 guy, Max. Um... But yeah, I think I'm pretty pretty sure I've got some Perry French, I think, in the basement. Uh, best favorite terrain by far was the terrain that came in the Mordheim box. 25 years later, we use it for almost every time we play. Nice. Nice. Uh, morning from Ohio, watching on my iPad while assembling the Deathwing Assault box while my kids watch cartoons on the TV. Nice. Jesse, how you doing in Milwaukee? Yeah, it's sunny here too. I had to close that shade, which is still probably giving me a little bit uh, too much, but it's not too bad. Um... Morning from Connecticut, West Virginia, Western Australia. Plan to rattle varnish today, but the layer of frost on everything said no. Yeah, that's probably not a good idea. Morning from Pennsylvania. Favorite terrain is Fogu models. Lots of great resin terrain, all handmade. Never even heard of them. Interesting, huh? Uh, greetings from Germany. Fi finishing the final touches on my Imperial Guard. Nice. Uh, let's see. Charlotte, North Carolina. VJ Morph. How are you doing? Hope you are well. Doing okay. Doing okay. Uh, Annapolis. Uh, unseasonably warm Winnipeg. Mm, that's kind of this whole year here in the States. It's been unseasonably warm because of the... Um, uh, because of the uh, El Nino off the coast of California out in the Pacific, allegedly. I'm a big fan of Fat Dragon Games Paper Terrain. Great fold-up cardstock um, buildings. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. It's all built up for Space Station Zero. It makes sense. I get you. I was wondering where you were getting that stuff from. Clearwater, Florida. How you doing? Got somewhat carried away with scatter terrain. Didn't even build models. Can't find XPS. Uh, so use household stuff and wood from the builder skip. Yeah, XPS foam, like you can order it online. Um, what's uh, Black Magic Craft? Jeremy from Black Magic Craft. He, if you go look at one of his videos, and I don't know if this is in the description of his videos, but there should be a link in there. If he was smart, he put a link in the description of one of his videos. He has like an online store or something where he sells different weird sizes of XPS foam. So instead of buying a four by eight that you stick on the outside of your house, if you live in Wisconsin or whatever, you know, underneath you put it, you don't just stick it on the outside of the house. You put it, it's a layer and then you put like shingles and crap over the top of it or whatever, uh, the siding, you know, whatever. Anyway, you can buy that stuff in stores around here because it's cold. Um, but if you don't live someplace where it's cold, then you can order that stuff. But instead of ordering a 4 by 8 sheet, which would be real hard to get in your mailbox, you can order smaller chunks and stuff like that. Um, so, yeah, Black Magic Craft on YouTube. Jeremy, I swear to God, he's got like a, a side business that does that or something like that. So he must, I would assume, have links. But I don't know. You might be able to Google it and find it too. Uh, Black Magic Craft. If you type in Black Magic Craft XPS foam, you're just going to find a lot of his videos talking about how he uses XPS foam, but you might find the right thing too. Um, yes, there we go. Uh, soon to be Frigid Saskatchewan. Ooh, fun. Uh, Central Texas is going to hit 85 today. Ooh, geez. See, I'm, I mean, 60 is like weird, but I'm like, I'm okay with it. 85, I'd be like, no, I don't want that. Um, not in February. <laughs> no. 
Like it'll get 85 here this summer easily. There'll be probably days when it gets into the 90s, but yeah, it's just when it's when it's February, and I don't believe this is actually true, but it's something that I feel is true. Um, I feel like in the winter, like around here, people are like, well, your blood is thicker. So that's why like when it gets to be like in the 50s in the morning, let's say in like, I don't know, September, you're like, oh, geez, it's cold. But when it's like February and it's in the 50s, you're walking around in shorts and you're like, well, my blood's thickened up because it's still winter technically. I don't think that's what it actually is, but it is definitely something. Um, so, yeah, same temperature can feel different at different times of the year. Eating breakfast in North Carolina amongst the pile of plastic debris I'm collecting to make Rogue Trader style terrain for skirmish games at my library. Nice. Uh, finishing up the Dark Angels Combat Patrol. The new one or the old one? Hopefully the old one. I like the old one. Uh, St. Paul here doing terrain. Uh, you, you knew Necromunda. Get used to it. Every day is terrain day. True. Yeah. Hello from Jutland, Denmark. How you doing? Uh, I've been painting 40k 4th edition miniatures. Enjoy myself. Toledo, Ohio. Nice. I'm wearing from San Antonio. Going to be playing some Conquest First Blood in a little bit. Have you ever played it? I played a demo of it. Not the new edition, but the previous, like, initial edition. I played a demo of it at um, Gen Con pre-pandemic, I think. Or maybe it was the first one back after the de pandemic. I can't remember if it was 2019 or if it was 2021. But I did give it a try. Um, let's see here. Do, 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 do. Uh, reporting in from South Anter uh, uh, Ontario, getting some Gasland stuff finished up, including scratch belt remote sentry guns. Nice. Jumping into combat patrol after the new list of White Dwarf. Oh, yeah. I've got that magazine around here somewhere. Um, if you aren't playing fantasy, grimdark, or World War II historical terrain is hard to get. Yeah, I can understand that. Hey, Param, how you doing? Yeah, no, um, I would say that, um... I mean, sometimes you see, like, weird stuff. Like, Malifaux has their own line of terrain, which is kind of cool stuff, and it has a very Malifaux vibe, a bit of a steampunk kind of thing going on to some degree. I don't know if they still sell it, though. I, I bought some when they first launched it. It was nice, hard plastic, really interesting-looking stuff. I've not found a great use for it, but I did buy some of it at, at a convention. I think it was at Origins 2018 or 2019. Um Yeah, it, well, yeah, it must have been because it was big enough that it wasn't going to fit in my luggage. But one of the other guys that I went there with, they were driving back. It was the guys from Game 4 at the time. Like I was flying back because I was going to Origins anyway before we even decided to go. So I already had plane tickets. So they were going to drive because they were bringing booth stuff. And so I was just like, hey, can you guys take this stuff back? And then I'll get it at the office on Monday or whatever. And so, yeah, that's how I got that stuff back. Because, yeah, normally if I fly to a convention, it's a lot harder to get... Uh, especially terrain and things like that, unless the company is willing to do shipping and stuff. And sometimes they do. You just pay them at the booth, and then they'll ship it when they get back, which is nice. But that's the big benefit, too, to also scratch building terrain, in my opinion. Uh, let's see here. Terrain crate is great. I also have a lot of Battlefield in the box stuff. Yep, I've got a bunch of that stuff, too. Anyone uh, used or gotten Dwarven Forge? Dwarven Forge is expensive, and most of their focus used to be more on role-playing, like making dungeons and hallways and castles and stuff like that. That being said, over the last couple of years, they have started making stuff that is aimed more towards war gamers. Um, but it's it, it's still pretty expensive, but understand that when you order stuff from Dwarven Forge, excuse me, Dwarven Forge, you generally get it pre-painted, like, and nicely pre-painted too, so... You know, I think you can buy some of their stuff not pre-painted. You can buy it just like unpainted and it's cheaper and then you can paint it yourself if you want to, but. SRS Studios for 3D print STLs. Interesting. Uh, let's see. Internet problems here in Virginia. Oh, that's no good. Spent the last two nights VJing in the forecourt of the Taylor Swift concert. One more to go. Ain't no crazy like Swifty crazy. Oh, gosh. Well, no, I suppose not. Yeah. I didn't realize she was in Australia. That's pretty cool. Uh, let's see here. Good time of day from a cold and showery Surrey, UK, doing some painting in the hobby shed. Any news on the cats? Things are getting better, mostly. Um, yeah, generally things are getting better. Rex is still crazy, especially in the mornings. He goes just... 
like this morning, 530, uh, he's up on the bed and making a lot of noise and crawling around. And he kept the last couple of days, he has been headbutting me in the mouth. Like he's trying to get his skull into my gullet. And I don't know what that's about. It's very strange. Um, today he was doing it and I was just like, what are you kid? Stop it. Stop it. And then I, I like lifted the sheet up and then he went underneath in the sheet and then he was in there for a little while. I'm like, oh, maybe he just wants to snuggle. That's nice. I mean, it's, and then he was there for about a minute and he was like, well, I'm done with that. And he left. Um, but yeah, I don't know what that, what that, that kind of thing is. Uh, he and George are getting along better. Um, we've still been keeping George upstairs in the guest room area. <clears throat> where he, you know, he came in, like when we first got him, we put him in the guest room. Because uh, when you get a new cat to bring it in and there's other cats, you want to keep them separated and, you know, all that kind of stuff. So at night, he still goes up there just so he doesn't get into too much trouble. But it also helps him, I think, maybe calm down. Because coming into a house with already four cats in it is probably a lot. Um, so, yeah, but for the most part, things have been getting a little bit calmer. So that's good. We'll see how that goes. Um Battle system strain is an idea. If you are short on space, though, being card not as rugged as others. Don't manhandle it. It's fine, though. Sure, yeah. Greetings from Raining Sussex. Uh, Y'all prefer airbrush to rattle or rattle can prime? Me personally, I rattle can prime. I like to rattle can prime plastic terrain kits. So if you buy like, you know, terrain from GW or, you know, like that stuff I mentioned from Malifaux or any other company, if it's plastic terrain, I generally try to like give it a uh, at least a decent kind of coat of rattle can primer before I start doing anything else to it. And the reason for that is because I feel like rattle can primer, especially the stuff that I have a tendency to use, which sometimes really isn't even primer. It's I like to use either Krylon or Rust-Oleum camouflage spray paint, but it is ultra matte. So it gives a really good surface. There's a really good tooth for the... Um, the stuff to get into for, for the paint to kind of hold on to. So it's a good, you know, it's a really good surface to paint on, at least I've found over the years. So um, anyway, I, I like to give that stuff because terrain has a tendency to take a bit more of a beating. You're a little bit less delicate with your terrain than you are with your miniatures. So for miniatures, I'll I pretty much only ever like to airbrush. Uh, prime because you can get it in all the little places all the nooks and crannies a lot easier you're not wasting as much it's a whole thing but um for pl for plastic terrain kits i prefer rattle can if it's something scratch built and it's not really made out of plastic much then uh, airbrush is fine it just takes longer you know um i will usually airbrush a scratch built piece as long as it is air, air you know I will, I will rattle can a scratch built piece as long as it is rattle can weather which it's currently not it's like 37 but yeah in general that's that's the way that kind of works um let me see where was i here do 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 um there we go uh i mostly rattle can primer but i would but would i save time to also rattle can black on a lot of minis and then airbrush white zenithal I think so. And also you would get a better white. Um, so if you rattle can black and then let it sit or whatever, you know, you're not even that long, you're just going to put another layer over it. And then you airbrush white, like you don't even need, need to airbrush white primer. If you just, what I've been doing with my Zenithals for about, at least a year now is I just airbrush a white paint over the top of it. If I'm doing white to black, if I'm doing another color fade, obviously I'm using those colors, but, um, but yeah, if you wanted to do rattle can black and then white with your airbrush, it would give you a nice smooth white, probably smoother than most rattle cans. The smoothest white rattle can that I've come across so far, amazingly, is it's is it white scar. I think it's white scar. It's whatever the newest white spray paint stuff from GW is. I think it's white scar because there was Corax white and white scar. And I think white scar is the newer can. That's surprisingly smooth for a rattle can of white. Um, still not as good as airbrush, but you know, um, let's see here. Archon. Yep. Okay. One upside to climate change, Wisconsin becoming more inhabitable. I mean, it probably won't be like this next year. I mean, it'll probably be like, we knew going in, like I saw a, like a weather, I came across a channel on YouTube that talks about weather and like forecasts, like long distances. Not just like, oh, here's the forecast for next week, but they're like, this is what, you know, 
fall is going to look like and you're in you know spring or summer or whatever well we saw in fall we happened to come across this video and he was like talking about you know this is what america is going to look like in the winter because of el nino and it showed a bunch of charts and it showed like colors that were like warmer than usual cooler than usual and because of the way the jet stream moves because el nino rolls up all of a sudden all of us up here in wisconsin minneapolis or you know minnesota all that we were in this weird spot that said warmer than usual and um yeah it was we didn't like we had one week of snow um, and it's all gone now, you know, and uh, again, like I said, it's going to be 60 on Tuesday, which is still technically February, <laughs> which is weird. So, yeah. <clears throat> um, very sorry about your kitty loss. Yeah, we still miss him. We still miss him. Thanks so much for sharing that. Was beautiful tribute video. Well, thank you. Um, let's see here. Italy, Columbia, Missouri, on my way to work. Post office never sleeps. Even on Sundays. Wow. Well, that's, I suppose, yeah, we get pack, we get packages once in a while from the post office on Sundays. Morning from the Mitten, just playing Pal World today on the PC. Gotcha. I've been playing, I haven't done, I didn't play it all yesterday because I was painting uh, and doing other stuff, but I meant to play uh, Helldivers 2. I've been playing Helldivers 2 on the PlayStation 5, and I've really been enjoying it. I can see why that game is getting like, like on Steam. They've had like peak concurrent 450,000 people playing at once. You know what I mean? Like it's just, it's blowing all these huge AAA and quadruple A, by the way, games out of the uh, water. And uh, uh, you love to see it. And it's, plus it's just a spectacular friggin' game. It's really, really good. Check out Badger Games in Wisconsin for Archon Studios stuff. They might have it. I know they carry it on their website. Nice. Kind of terrain are you using for the tanks, the apocalypse, such as walls, buildings, old monuments, that kind of thing. Um, they are like World War II ruins, uh, STLs that I found on my mini factory. So yeah, they've definitely got like a, you know, like a factory kind of ruin, you know, and rebar sticking out and stuff like that. And a lot of bricks laying around and all that kind of stuff on the ground. Well, in the base of the thing, you know, that kind of stuff. So yeah, it's basically that kind of stuff. It's going to look like it's a little urban-ish, you know what I mean? Uh, morning from Queensland. Looking at railway building kit in my stash. Wondering how to approach. Hmm. Uh, you have Harry French in the basement? No, Perry French. Uh, the Perry brothers, they make miniatures. And they have, sometimes they make French miniatures. Um, or miniatures of French soldiers is, I guess, properly the way. I think handmade hands down. I love the charm of it. Sure, yeah. Dream Terrain Kit is the Fortified Manor Kit for the old GW Fantasy, but it's so expensive now. What's the one that is like the... It's like a like a tower, and there's a thing on the top, and there's skulls. And there's like a observatory or something on the top, and it's real tall and skinny and whatnot. Um, scrying Tower or something like that? Like it was a previous thing back in Fantasy, and then they made a new version, or they, made the, they basically repackaged it for Aegis Sigmar, and then, no, they don't make it anymore, but I have one of those. Use an infrared heat lamp to dry spray primer. Works well if the humidity and temperature isn't right. Hmm. Your terrain is the magnetized foreground terrain. Nice. What do you do, what do you all do with the empty boxes? You must have millions. I have been getting rid of empty boxes. Um, now, to be fair, I just recently started working on a camera rig for a new camera that I got. So I have been getting a lot of little boxes from a company called Small Rig because I ordered a bunch of different things and to make, you know, the rig. And um, it's back there. It's back there on the, on the, on the thing. Um so I have a lot of those boxes and sometimes I'm like, oh, I should save these. I'm like, no. So I've been, I've been trying to get rid of boxes as much as possible. Every once in a while, I will keep a big box because it can be useful for storage. You know, like a, like a, like when GW sends you like a, where when you buy a, a big box of like, you know, they don't do it anymore with kill team. And, and you know, they used to have the bigger boxes for like kill team where you had the terrain in there and then also the two forces and all that stuff. Now they're separating those two things where the two forces come in one box and the terrain comes in a separate box. So and those boxes are pretty flimsy too. Um, but those kind of thicker boxes, I have saved some of those just to store other stuff in once in a while, but a lot of them I've actually just flattened out and gotten rid of. Um, yeah, just having a whole bunch of boxes around, it becomes problematic. 
Um, are you going to Gamma this upcoming weekend? Yes, I'm going to get there. So a week from Sun, or a week from today. So I'll be leaving Sunday for Louisville, 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 Kentucky. I'm flying to Louisville, Kentucky, and I'll be getting there at like 11 p.m. So it's going to be pretty late on Sunday. So technically, Monday will be my first day there, really. And then I will come back sometime on Friday. So I'll be, I'll be, so the downside is I'm going to miss two Twitch streams in a row, which is a bummer. I don't, I, I'm not a big fan of that, but it is what it is. So I'll be doing that. Um, but I'll be there with the folks from um, Army Painter and uh, hanging out and uh, in the booth. Gamma is uh, the Game Manufacturers Association, which should be spelled just GMA. I don't know where that extra A comes from. A mystery. Anyway, um, so yeah, they have an expo, a trade show. And so all the booths are all predominantly distributors and manufacturers and game companies and stuff like that. And the people walking up and down the booths um, are pretty much mostly store owners and um, store employees and stuff like that. So I'll be there with a bunch of the other, with a bunch of folks from the Army Painter. Um, and I don't know. I'll I'll be doing some meetings, not necessarily for Army Painter, but for me, you know, like talking to some folks and stuff is the plan. And um, I'm also going to be, uh, what else am I doing, doing there? Well, I'll be standing in the booth and telling people about Army Painter stuff. Like, I'm not a salesperson. Like, I don't work for Army Painter, but they basically kind of pay me to go to some of these trade shows because some people know me from like walking by and they're like, hey, aren't you that guy from YouTube? And also I can talk. Lord knows. You, you've seen it. Uh, heard it most likely but yeah so um i've been i did one in fort wayne indiana back in september of 2023 um that was kind of a trial run and so yeah i'm doing gamma this year i'm going to be going to a trade show in canada in may i'm going to be doing i think fort wayne again in september so yeah i'll be doing three or four different uh, trade shows with them um, just back to that snot goblin campaign. I've heard the the words. I, I mean, I, I I know that that's a thing, <laughs> but it is funny just to say I backed that snot goblin campaign. I think that's a funny sentence. Um, let's see here. Terrain for print has great collections. Nice. Uh, really used to like World Works games when I first started working in office equipment. Nice. Corvus games terrain and printable scenery are my favorite currents. Our current favorites. Um, I got some, actually some Corvus stuff printed just recently, some cool buildings and things like that. Again, my friend Dave, he was able to print some neat, and they're buildings like, um, like New York buildings, you know what I mean? Like they're like modern, kind of brownstone-y sort of like things and stuff, but they've got a bit of a cyberpunk vibe, and I guess depending on how you paint them, you can make them even more cyberpunky. Morning from beautiful Junction, Junction City, Wisconsin. I'm glad I could catch the show. I love the ship terrain from Kill Team's Shadow Youth Vaults. Just need to finish painting it. That stuff is kind of fun to paint if you if you don't get too into the weeds. You know, if you don't get super, super detailed, it's actually, it can go pretty quick. Um, BMC stuff is also different from normal XPS foam. Oh, the Black Magic Craft stuff is also different from normal. X. It's similar to the Euro variety that takes texture more easily. No kidding. Hmm. It is green. I've seen that. Yeah. Um, Ohio seems to be quite well represented. Wonder if we should have an Ohio Minions meetup. I mean, I don't know why not. You know, you ought to. Um, going to be getting highs of 13C this week. Not looking forward to summer. Well, yeah. That's also the issue is that I don't, I haven't heard like what summer is supposed to be like around here yet. So we'll, we'll see. Had to help my FLGS owner do his GW order because he's in the hospital. It'd be nice to your local stores. It's hard gauging what people will buy. Yeah, no, it definitely is. And also GW has been squirrely lately. Um, like I ordered some stuff from my local um, shop that I want to use for kit bashing, some GW stuff. And it, uh, and then, and sometimes he like, he, I'll, I'll have him order me stuff and then it will come in and he will forget to let me know. And then it sits in his store for a while and then I feel bad about it. So I have a tendency to call and go, Hey, like, I don't need it. It's not like I'm like, Oh, I'm waiting, you know, to get that done. Um, I just don't want it sitting in his store and, you know, you know I'd rather just, you know, pay him for it and get it out of there for him. Um, so I, I messaged him. I was like, Hey, did you, uh, that stuff show, show up yet? Uh, I can come pick it up whenever. And he's like, no, it hasn't. And he's like, 
GW's been real weird lately. He's like, stuff's in stock, but I haven't even got a shipping uh, thing. And this was like two weeks after he ordered it. So yeah, their um, their restocks are still not doing well. Um, like he was telling me a couple of weeks ago that, well, no more than a couple of weeks ago, a month ago, that they basically just told all the stores, look, we're going to not take any restock orders for a week because we need to catch up. I'm like, aren't you a multi-billion dollar co corporation? I mean, come on, man. I don't know. I guess you should just, I mean, you know, for uh, shareholder value, you should just try to do as much as possible with as little help as possible and pay them as little as you can. It seems to be the, uh, you know, the normal way. So that's where we're at. Good morning from sunny Toronto. I almost said Tortoro, but that's not right. Um, basing some Leviathan Marines. It's warm enough to spray a prime outside today. Nice. I'm making my own wood carved miniatures. To be playing off... Uh, uh, Grimdark Future Firefight on a 15mm scale. Neat. Lowe's also sells the Ulfa Hobby Knives, the Black Magic Craft highly recommends. Neat. Calhoun, Tennessee. Take my first steps into 30k, building some world, world beer, bearers. Not world bearers. That's a different thing altogether. Uh, Malifaux Terrain is still listed on the Weird Web Store. Oh, okay, cool. Like, I don't think I've ever seen it in a store. The stuff that I bought, I got from the, the Weird booth, like at Origins. 98% are sure it was Origins. Uh, woods of New York City. I need to set up for the next Majestic 13 scenario, but it's the first ambush and I'm fairly, uh, fairly scared. Well, I mean, I can understand that. Painting custodians for Kill Team and now expanding for Combat Patrol. I must be mad. Well, you must like gold, probably. Uh, anyone else stoked for Epic Warpath from Mantic? Morning from Pittsburgh. Hope everyone's having a great weekend. Got a little break at work, so I'll pop in. Nice. Uh, St. Louis, Missouri, my favorite terrain is handmade stuff. I really enjoy being uh, able to create unique architecture and landscapes to add to the story and strategy within the games. I get that, yeah. Howdy from Chile, not warm, no Chile, no warm Ontario. Doing a hobby stream with my dad later. He got a model car kit for his birthday. Nice. I don't know if I ever did any model cars when I was a kid, but I did definitely do some model planes. I remember doing a de Havilland Mosquito, uh, B-25 Mitchell, did an A-10 Warthog, Probably some other ones as well. Working on my Flames of War pile of shame. Battlefront has a great line of pre-painted battlefield in the box terrain and buildings. Yeah, they're way better now about that stuff. Back when I played 10 years ago, uh, when I was playing Flames of War, the they would put out buildings and stuff like that. And then you'd be like, cool, can I can I get some of those? And they're like, hmm, no, we 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 print we 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 made all of them and we sold all of them, and that's it. And you're like, well, you should make more. And they're like, well. Should we though? You know, I mean, that was literally like kind of the, 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 what we were getting from them. They were just, they would make stuff. It would sell out instantly because it was good and used and like a staple, like European buildings or forests, you know, stuff like that. And then you'd, you'd be like, you guys going to make any more of those? And they're like, no, nah, we're thinking of making something different now. And you're like, but we can't get that thing that is a staple for these games anymore because you guys stopped. And so now they're much bit like you can generally get the stuff from them. I think they finally got smart. I'm assuming it's because they watched my video where I complained about that. And then they were like, well, we better change our ways because God, God forbid that uncle Adam makes a video about us. So, you know, I'm sure that's, I'm sure that's what it was. That's what it was. Um, Hagglethorn hollow. That's my answer. I don't know what the question was, but I like the answer. Uh, I like my terrain sci-fi agnostic, but not as easy as it used to be as minis have such set style now. I mean, you know, I have a bunch of like Tatooine style buildings uh, that are 3D printed that um, I can use, I do use in uh, Space Weirdos or whatever. Like, sure, if you were like, okay, I mean, and to be perfectly frank, if you had a bunch of Space Marines running around during, you know, in a bunch of Tatooine style like desert buildings, I don't have a problem with that. Like, you know, it's, that's a... I'm not saying that you're wrong by saying, oh, well, I don't, I don't like that. But it, I think some people look at it and go, well, you're not supposed to do that. And I say, if you want to, you can. Absolutely. You know what I mean? If you don't want to, well, then, then don't, obviously. Cat head bonks means he likes you. At 530 in the morning and repeatedly in the face, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. Um... Almost forgot today was live show day. I was watching 2020 LVO wrap up video moments before the tragedy. Glad we're uh, doing better. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Chris from Orlando, Florida, working my Flames of War pile of shame. I think I read that one already. Did I screw up? What happened? 
Oh, no, it's just it's in here twice. Gotcha. Uh, I like the universal train that isn't themed too strongly. Sure. Future period train by Snot Goblin is currently in Kickstarter. Gotcha. Future proof, not future period. I mean, either makes sense. Um, wow, I am really far behind. There we go. Um, might as well go out with the floating islands for fantasy. Sure. Legion Terrain offers painted and unpainted terrain for Star Wars Legion and Shatterpoint. Nice. Um, War Scenery does some cool stuff too. I like their um, Star Wars terrain. They do a lot of really cool Star Wars terrain as well. When I build terrain, it's 3D print and stuff, obviously. When I build terrain, it's usually intended to be used in multiple game systems. Yeah, no, for sure. I I rarely ever want a piece of terrain that I can't use in a different game. And again, I can use a piece of terrain in whatever game I want if I believe in myself, um, which sometimes I do. But still, if you look at it and go, well, that's obviously, you know, a Star Wars building. It doesn't have to be. Um Let's see. I uh, wish GW would do some pre-printed card terrain again. That way we could spice them up with washes and stuff. I don't know how well washes would work on card. I would think it would soak in and make them all bendy. Maybe if you airbrush it on, but... Um, by the way, why don't they have a null and oil spray can? It seems like a missed revenue. Because it wouldn't work. Not like null and oil is supposed to. Like when you shoot wash contrast, speed paint, any kind of stuff like that through an airbrush when you aerosol something like that, basically, um, it completely loses its ability to do the thing that it's designed to do. Uh, washes don't work like washes when you shoot them through an airbrush. Contrast and speed paints don't work like they're supposed to when you shoot them through an airbrush. What they do, however, is that because they're transparent, they're great to spray over something to tone it or to filter it is what they usually call it in scale modeling. So like you've got, I don't know, let's say this was a piece of terrain, right? And so this piece of terrain is sitting on the ground a lot and then it rains and then like it splashes up and it's just over time, you've seen buildings and things like that. They're just grungy along the bottom a little bit, but it's not like something you could very easily wipe away. It's just a subtle gradation of filth, right? Um, you can do that super easily with either wash or contrast or you know speed paint i have a tendency to use speed paint these days instead of washes and you just put like a brown a couple of drops of that brown speed paint in there and just sort of just kind of spray it across and you get a nice little gradient that doesn't cover the color it just kind of mm, it doesn't even just darken it it's like oh, it's brown and warm and then it fades to the normal color and um that's what those do so if you had a rattle can of null oil I, it would not do what you think it might do you'd have to spray it on so thick for it to start to actually pool and go into crevices that it would be too much. And it would also probably cost incredible amounts of money as well. So there's that. Um, but yeah, for sure. Um, <clears throat> like to use terrain for many purposes, but doesn't seem to work. Gotcha. I need to scratch build some basic hills soon. I have a tendency these days to stay away from hills. Like a rocky crag, yes. But hills... I don't know. I don't know why. I just, I, I like Rocky Cray. I, I like a lot of buildings. That's for me lately is that I'm a big fan of buildings. So I'm a big fan of Brutal Cities terrain. Would it fit with 40K? I own some of that stuff, which I really need to build one of these days because I bought a bunch of it and I had to ship it from Australia. So it was expensive, but it's really cool stuff. It's like a bunch of, it's MDF buildings, but they are in a, a, a style of architecture called Brutalism. And that's, hence, that's why they call it Brutal Cities. From what I understand, the guy who uh, started the company is a um, architectural student or something along those lines, or you know. Nonetheless, um, I think I could. Sure. I mean, it's. I mean, it's. An, it, it would just be a different place. You know what I mean? Like usually, you think of like, oh, 40k. If I'm going to go see a 40k building, it's going to be skulls on top of skulls and stuff like that. And technically, you can glue a bunch of skulls to your brutal terrain stuff if you want to, but then it's not exactly going to be super usable for other games because you'd be like. Why is that building covered in skulls when we're playing, you know, Zona Alpha or something like that? So, yeah. But that terrain is really, really cool. Uh, I just cannot make a fantasy coaching in look like a Queenslander. Hmm. Just noticed NFL black and white churns out desaturated models. It's like coloring black and white photos in Photoshop. Looks good in pictures, though. I noticed NFL black and white churns out desaturated models. I mean, it depends on what you put them over with, I suppose. Yeah, like basically it is. It's basically coloring a black and white photo. So you start out with that and then you put transparent colors over it. Like, um, like I said, you know, speed paints or whatever, even washes. 
uh, and then you just uh, kind of go from there. And, you know, I've had plenty of models that I've painted in that way where I'm like, well, that's all far too colorful. And that's what I like the guys I've been working on on Twitch the last couple of weeks or whatever. Uh, they're Stargrave scavengers. I have been keeping them as muted as possible in color value. I just want them to all be browns and warm colors and just and I have a tendency to like that seems to be my thing. Like I'm not. Like Vince is known for like, got to have magenta in there somewhere, you know, that kind of stuff, uh, you know, and everyone's got their kind of their thing. And my thing is like, everything should look dirty kind of in brown, but not like crazy dirty and brown. You know what I mean? Um, you definitely like a lot of the turnip 28 stuff is like, let's just, you know, it seems like I, some of the folks are just like, let's mix putty almost in or whatever with paint and then just sort of troll it on which makes sense for the story because everything is just mud, you know, in turn of 28, like everything, like nothing, all the plants are dead except for the, the roots, basically the tubers, you know, the, the turnips as it were. Um, so everything is just mud. There's no grass anymore, all that kind of stuff. And so it makes sense in those situations. But for me, I like to make things look like they've been out in battle and it's been grungy, but uh, they're still not super crazy caked in mud texture usually. Spanish for the Nino. It's true. It's I was going to make that joke, but you, you guys beat me to it. Um, I'm thinking I should retire to Wisconsin because at this rate, the weather will be like I'm used to in Florida. I mean, there are memes that you see out there about, you know, I'm just going to say we have a lot of uh, fresh water up here uh, and we're kind of away from the coasts and... Um, yeah, that's, that's just maybe think about that. Um, brutal cities should work perfectly well with 40k in terms of scale, with the lack of ridiculous detail would be heresy. Uh, it doesn't have to be heresy. You could just land on a planet that's not, you know, not covered in skulls all the time. For super earth, indeed, indeed. Technically, winter goes till the 21st of March, and March can be awful. We ain't out of the woods yet. Sure, sure. Delivering democracy. Helldivers is eating up too much of my life. I haven't, like I said, I did, I, was, I kept thinking I was going to play yesterday and I didn't because I was too busy painting. And then we went and ran some errands and stuff like that. But yeah, and I might play today, but I might also be just too busy. I know we, I've got, we're going to lunch at my in-laws and then right after that, we're going to a birthday thing for a friend. And then I got a meeting tonight at nine with uh, Vince. And so, you know, we'll see. Uh, I'm not sure. Um, really enjoyed the snarl zine working on some tanks. Well, thanks. I appreciate that, Tyler. Skullvane Mance. That's what it is. I've got one of those down in the basement. Do you ever do non-hobby ho holiday traveling? If so, what types of holidays do you prefer? Uh, no. I honestly, we have, well, 20 years ago, we went to, uh, we went on our honeymoon, but it was here in Wisconsin. Uh, we went to Spring Green, Wisconsin, which is where, the House on the Rock is. We stayed at the House on the Rock Resort, and um, we went through the House on the Rock, which if you've never been, you should definitely try it. It's crazy, it, like literally crazy. Um, and we were going to do a tour of Taliesin, which is a Frank Lloyd Wright house, but it was really expensive at the time. I'm sure it probably still is, but at the time it was like, it was like I don't know, 40 or 50 bucks a person, and we were like, you know, they were like, so yeah, we're not big vacationers. I would like to maybe do a little bit more of that, but yeah, we just haven't really done a lot of it. And it's, uh, you know, the tick apocalypse is coming for Southern Ontario this year. Thanks to the mild weather. Oh, that makes sense. Also not in Wisconsin, but like in further South from us, there are going to be two big super broods of cicadas that are going to wake up at the same time. Like one's on like a 21 year cycle and one's like on a seven year cycle or something like that. And they've sunk up and like for the first time since the 1800s, they're both going to be awake this summer. So there's going to be parts of the United States that are going to be incredibly loud at night specifically and probably during the day too. Um, we get cicadas up here, but I don't know that the either of those broods is the type that we get up here. Ours just are always around. They're just not that loud. They're just, or else we've just all become used to it. I'm not sure which. Um, youngest son is a freaking death captain. I'm stuck at just Master Chief. I think I just hit 10th. I've just hit 10th level. I'm not that far. Uh, is there an easy way to make a proper forest? I'd love one for MS, uh, for the Middle Earth game. And he just said, it takes sense that there would be forest fights. 
Um, I guess it depends on what kind of trees you want and how much you want to spend. I would tell you to go take a look at like the like the, the people who make train boards, you know, that kind of stuff. Because the thing is, is a tree is the scale doesn't matter as much. Like I've purchased in the packs different packs of like pine trees from Woodland Scenics. That's the name of the company I'm looking for, Woodland Scenics. And if they come in different sizes, you just like, well, that's a small tree. I'm like, well, no, it's supposed to be a tree for, you know, your guys are supposed to be this big and the tree's supposed to be that big. And I'm like, but if I just put it next to a guy who's that big, then it's just a short tree. It doesn't, you know, matter. Houses scales, you know, buildings scale matters, but with rocks and hills and trees, it doesn't really. Um, the other option I would tell you if you like a nice pre-painted like tree that's very modular and kind of like almost kind of like hard plastic, but you don't have to do anything with it because again, like I said, it's pre-painted. Uh, Monster Fight Club makes some really nice trees too. If you're looking for something that's basically kind of not a pine tree, although I think they're working on pine trees, but they're they're again they're kind of different and modular. They're pretty they're pretty cool. Um, Necropolis 28 is cool for storage because you only have a 16 by 16 inch battlefield. Sure, yeah. I've been really getting more interested in two foot by two foot games, honestly. Um, Forbidden Psalm, uh, you know, Last War, Kill Sample Process. Technically, if you play 75 point games of combat, or sorry, of, um, what's his name there? Uh, uh, Space Weirdos. <laughs> Uh, that one is also two foot by two foot. If if you play 150 points, you're supposed to play on three foot by three foot. But I only have about four GW box sets. Uh, they plus a folded blanket make great cat beds. Oh, yeah, no, I can see that. GW just released the rules data sheets for the last two kill teams, scouts and striking scorpions. Did we win? I don't know. I'll have to take a look. Uh, I use my coffin boxes for scatter terrain towards. Yeah, that's a good place for it too. I have a tendency to use like one of those boxes. I'll use like the lid of one of those boxes for like, I'm going to the airbrush room and I need to carry a whole bunch of things at once and not drop anything. And then I'll just put a bunch of that stuff in there. And then, or I'll go outside if I'm going to be rattle canning like a bunch of terrain pieces. Stacking it in that is easier than like holding it like this and then dropping pieces down the stairs. So yeah. Um, you should check out Wonderfest in Louisville sometime. Is it? next week because if it's not then i won't be able to <laughs> well i mean i could but i'll be in actual louisville next week so or not not this coming week but the week after um how goes today not too bad not too bad my eyes bothering me a little bit again i did get new glasses too these are not them these are my like remember when i said things were going well with the cats hey that'll learn them um, what was I talking about? Oh, glasses. Yeah, these are my normal, like, close-up glasses and stuff like that. But these are my new glasses that I got, which I'm still getting used to. Uh, these showed up yesterday. I ordered them online. I had to go get an eye exam and all that stuff. And they're like, hey, your stuff isn't right. And I'm like, mm, yeah, tell me about it. So these are new ones. And I've got a couple other pairs coming as well. But I'm going to get a new replacement to these too. So that'll be good. These are, again... They're like blue blockers. They're good for the computer screen. They're designed to be focused. Like these, suck. I can't see past about, like everything's out of focus past about three or four feet, everything, you know, so you're not supposed to drive with these. These are designed for sitting in front of a computer. So, um, and every once in a while I get up and walk around. And I'm like, why can't I? Oh yeah, I can see I'm wearing the wrong ones. So anyway, that's fun. Um, should carve out some time to hit the Frazier Museum in Louisville. They've got excellent toy soldier collection. Hmm. Uh, kept a bunch of GW tray boxes to use uh, for priming and sealing models. Yep, yep. Get rid of boxes, no space. Yeah, I, I don't disagree. Game, ah, Manufacturers Association. It could be that. Um, it's been weirdly in the high 40s when it should be in the 20s and 30s. Yeah, it's been weird here too. I have a show coming up at the end of March here, Heritage Con, at the Canadian Warplane Heritage Museum in Hamilton, Ontario. Though it's primarily a plastic modeling show. That's cool. Are you doing with uh, Army Painter at Adepticon? Yeah, I mean, I'll be, I'll be uh, hanging out with the rest of the factory team at Adepticon. So it'll be me and uh, Phil, the Glacial Geek, Sam. Uh, and uh, Eric from Eric's Hobby Workshops. The four of us will be there. The three of us were at LVO, but Eric couldn't make LVO. So, but we'll all be at Adepticon. So like, we'll be, you know, we won't all be in the booth at the same time or whatever. We'll be, you know, hopping around doing all kinds of things and whatever. I've got 
an event I'm running, me and Vince are running an event on Thursday afternoon. I'm judging uh, the Armies on Parade big hallway thing on Saturday night, along with Eric and also uh, Miniac. Um, I've got lots of different meetings and things I've got planned and stuff. So yeah, but um, but I'll be there also a representing uh, the uh, factory team as well. Ever been to ReaperCon? Uh, I haven't, no. It's very frequently the same time as some other convention I go to. Is it the same time as Nova? It might be the same time as Nova. The sun just keeps getting brighter and brighter. Oh, just do that. Okay. Um, let's see here. Great call on the fidget poppers using one now for dropper bottle paint, and it's a game changer. Absolutely. No, the fidget poppers have... I've been saying this a bunch. The fidget poppers have changed the way that I paint like wet palette changed the way that I paint. Like, and and it, both are improvements. So yeah, for sure. It's definitely a, a big deal. How do you feel about Epic Basing? The company that makes the stuff, uh, like the little 3D printed little, I, I, the model that I painted for my very first ever display model that I took with me to Nova that one, uh, the, the, the stuff on the base is mostly from Epic Basing. So um, they need, it seems like neat stuff. Yeah. Do you have Tabletop Minions, Pachow merch, ball caps? Not yet, but I will. Um, we do have... No, I went a little bit too dark. I shouldn't fuss with this, but I do. Um, it, we do have ball caps for Rain and Hell and Space Station Zero, and we'll have more merch soon. But um, yeah, but I, I will. When I switch everything over to the new shop for Tabletop Minions, I'll have ball caps if people are interested for sure. I do have Pachow beanies currently on the current shop. So if you go down into the, I think if you just go down into the um, the description of this video, there's a thing in there for merch. It'll take you to my old merch store, which that stuff's still all good. You can still order. It's all print on demand. Um, but the, the beanies are in there and they say Pachow on them and then it's embroidered and stuff. And it's just a black beanie with white. If you paint for display, keep the box to use as a backup. What is that yellow box with the handle in the background? Whatever I think my roommate has the same thing. Uh, it's uh, uh, up there. That is a, uh, there, that's a Geiger counter. Um, let's see here. Army Painter has their, has their type foam and rattle can. It use won't melt it. Yeah, they do make, rattle can, the, they have a spray that you can spray on rattle can, or you can rattle can onto foam and it won't melt it. Uh, Army Painter does. What melts foam is the uh, propellant. It's not the stuff that you're spraying. It's actually the stuff that propels it out of the can that eats the foam. So if you just change the propellant to a different type of stuff, then it doesn't eat foam. So they're not the only ones. There's other companies out there too, but not in the hobby space that I've seen. Um, I've seen there's a texture paint you can buy uh, that's like a splatter paint that doesn't eat foam because the propellant is weird because it's because of the fact that it splatters out in that way. I don't know exactly. I don't remember the brand, but there is a type of, uh, yeah, of splatter paint type texture, like stone texture type stuff that does not eat foam, but most do. Um, but army painter does have some like the normal army painter, uh, like primer cans. I think they do eat foam, but they make a specific terrain masters or something like that brand of spray that doesn't. So, Um, Dungeon and laser stuff from Archon is awesome, very modular, can be packed away or built permanently. Yep, yep. I built all my stuff permanently, but yeah, it's very cool. Uh, with some kit boxes, if I really like the artwork, I'll cut it out and pin it on my wall. Well, that's cool. I was watching a vid GW is becoming less friendly to third-party retailers. So weird. Someone heard, someone mentioned about that on Friday on the stream. Someone said, have you heard about the rumor that they're going to make it so that independent retailers can't get pre-orders anymore? And I haven't heard that. It doesn't surprise me at all, honestly, if that was what would happen. Because I, I I strongly feel like GW has been trying to make it so you only buy product from them. You as the end user. They don't want you to buy it from stores. But probably, I swear to God, I'd heard years ago. I heard the reason that they still sell, sell to independent stores was because of a tax thing. And if that tax thing ever got changed in the UK... 
so that they didn't have to do that anymore, they would immediately stop selling the stores, which doesn't make any sense because there are so many more independent stores than there are GW stores or their website. But to be fair, the fact that they can't keep up right now, I guess it kind of makes sense. I think that part of this, if this is true, which I don't know, but I've heard it now a couple of different spots. If the reason, if they've decided we're not going to do pre-orders at, at, at independent stores anymore, we're only going to do it through our stores and through our website, it's because they don't have enough product and they can't make enough product because they're having all kinds of production problems and stuff like that, which, you know, it is what it is. Um, let's see. Just saw a video where there's evidence that independent stores won't be able to pre-order. Oh, that's, both of you are saying the same thing. If they do, it's a lottery system. I mean knee jerk if i was a local store i would say cool i'm going to stop selling their product but you know you kind of can't because it's like basically if you're a if you're a game store and you're not selling magic D D or 40k you probably aren't making very much money it's just the way it works but that being said knee jerk reaction for me would be like cool then i'm gonna stop selling your product um but, you know, what are you going to do? Uh, I used to scratch build and kit bash. Now it's mostly terrain I print on my FDM printer. Yeah, there's... Uh, these days, especially if you can even do a little bit of sculpting, like, it would be so much easier to do that. But there's certain things that scratch building still gives you the ability to do that sometimes 3D printing can't. Um, sometimes it's just a specific kind of... Um, like, what am I trying to say? Like a specific kind of like uh, look to it. You know what I mean? Like a, a certain amount of character, I guess, is the thing. When you're building something yourself, there's a little bit different character to it. But, you know, sometimes people are just like, I, I you know, some people just don't have the ability to figure out how to, to, to build, scratch, build their own train. Or they're just never happy with what they get when they finish. Um, and then if they, if you go, well, but, you know, you could buy this STL here and then make this really super cool Tudor style, you know, fantasy house and all that kind of stuff and just take you like a day to print it or whatever, then a lot of people would be like, yeah, I think I'll just do that instead. Um, so I get it. Once upon a time, kids could buy war hams with their pocket money. I mean, you know, once upon a time, soda used to be 50 cents too. I mean, I don't know. That being said, it is still, I still think obviously GW is the most expensive brand out there for the most part within wargaming. And I think that they don't see any reason to stop. <laughs> so, you know, um, but I keep talking about reasons why you might want to stop. I mean, there's reasons you might not want to, too, for sure. You know, you're just like, it's the game that we all play at our shop or we play with our friends and that's what we like. And I love Space Marines or I love Eldar or whatever, you know, the thing. I get it, you know, but I I also, you know, I do clang the bell that there's a lot of other games out there. Um, I talked about that on Friday's video, as a matter of fact, which is doing pretty well. It's actually started, it was... It was 5 out of 10, and then now it's moved up to 3 out of 10, which is um, better. It goes the opposite way. When you go, oh, I love that thing, 10 out of 10, that's that's one thing. In YouTube videos, 10 out of 10 is not good because what, what, what happens is it compares your video. Your video has been up for three hours, and it compares your video, which has been up for three hours, against the last nine videos that you've also put up when they were at the three-hour mark. And then it shows you how many views they have and then ranks them that way. So you can always look at the app and look at it. So when you wake up in the morning, like I do, and my you know, video has gone live overnight, one out of 10 is like, awesome. This is doing better than the last nine videos that I've done uh, at this time. You know, I usually wake up, the video's usually been up about six hours. Um, 10 out of 10 is bad because that means it is in last place out of the last, you know, totally including that video, 10 videos. So, um, so yeah, so... But over time, sometimes they will change because like right now at the six hour mark, it's at five out of 10. But then maybe at the 20, 12 hour mark, it'll hit maybe only four out of 10, you know, because sometimes videos will like they don't just do like a flat amount of viewage. Like sometimes views change like it's doing this. And then all of a sudden, you know, another country wakes up and starts going to work and they get to work and they start watching videos. And then that bumps it up or someone shares it someplace where it gets a bunch of extra or a lot of people share or whatever. Sometimes it goes the other direction, too. Sometimes you start out at five out of ten and then all of a sudden later you're at six out of ten. You're like, oh, bummer. But, you know. So anyway, yeah. I like to see GW release some old Aquila Strongpoint kits. That Plasma Obliterator looks so cool. I don't know if I remember that one. The name sounds right, but I don't I don't remember that one. 
Air tech for standard battle tech. Cool. Word bearers. That's true. Would be a very Wisconsin uh, Space Marine chapter. You're not wrong. Um, when I want to use a rattle can, I just use it in the kitchen. I spray in a box, close the door for 30 minutes and never have a problem. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, can we close the, I mean, we can kind of close the bath, the door to the kitchen, but it doesn't, it's uh, like a swingy door. And so it doesn't really seal or anything like that. I'm going to try to bring in some extra money and sell a bunch of my old stuff on eBay. Nice. Hello from Sweden. From there's no T in Sweden. S Sweden, not Sweden. Made way stream. It was Sweden and stream were right next to each other on my screen there, and then I was like, "What? Did I ever play as? Uh, I did not ever. I don't think I ever did a Spitfire airplane. I did, like I said, I remember doing the Havilland Mosquito, um, B25 Mitchell. I did an A10 Warthog. I did do a P51. I know I did a P51. Uh, let's see here. I am way there. Sweden, Spitfire. GW wants to hold on to stock in order to sell more of it directly from their site uh, for maximum profit. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I normally scratch build terrain, but I'm very tempted to get a bunch of that Black Site Studios MDF stuff. That stuff's pretty good. You know, some companies do MDF, meh, and sometimes they do it pretty well. I like them. I like Brutal Cities, and I like uh, Death Ray Designs. I think the three of them do MDF pretty well. Um, yeah, I mean, sometimes you're still going to look at it and go, well, that's MDF, but good MDF is still, you know, not too bad. Uh, picked up Silver Bayonet the other day. Any suggestions for terrain and minis for it beyond the kits from Osprey? Um, I mean, for terrain, you probably just want like, like Victorian era type stuff, I would think. Right? Sometime around there. It's like 17, late 1700s, early 1800s. Is that roughly the time? I think that would work best. I think there are just too many alternatives out there to really care about what GW does or doesn't do. Yeah, there's plenty of op options. You know, there's a lot of people in the comments for uh, yesterday or Friday's video who were like, well, if you don't go and find out what people in your local area are playing, you're wasting your time. And I'm like, that's how you end up playing a game you don't like. That's how a lot of people are out there complaining constantly about GW because it's the only game that they play because they think it's the only game they can play because it's the game that gets played in their local area. You know, and I'm always talking about become a gaming advocate, start playing a skirmish game or something like that, build two forces, start teaching people how to play. Um, if you're if you're like, oh, I got to play in tournaments, well, good luck. Then you're going to have to stick with the biggest companies because those are the only companies that bother with tournaments in most situations. But if you're like, I want to try to do something cool, um, you know, then, I mean, like, the first games that have gotten signed up at TMX, by the way, click, there we go. Um, so I really, get that. look at that picture. Like, like that picture's from, like, first of all, I need a haircut super bad. I need a haircut again. I'm getting one on Tuesday. But that picture there, that's, that's, oof. Um, that is back in 2017. I think that's the first TMX. Um, and I really need to update the website. And I've got new pictures. I just, eh. But, um, whoops, I can't, there. Um, so, yeah, Tabletop Minions Expo 2024 coming up June 1st and 2nd. Um, and it's at the Oshkosh Waterfront Hotel and Convention Center, which is what it's called now. But by June, I believe it will be a Marriott of some flavor. So it used to be, a. most recently, it was a Best Western premiere. And then Marriott's going to buy it, but company that's selling it to Marriott is fixing it up right now and fancying up all this stuff. And so in the mid time, legally, it's called Oshkosh Waterfront Hotel and Convention Center. But by the time um, June rolls around, I think it'll be a Marriott. So I'll have to change that anyway. But nonetheless, so um, it used to be we used to do this at the university uh, here in town, but the university, the building that we used to rent, uh, the rent that room for to do this in is no longer doing non campus uh, groups. They're just not doing events for non-campus groups. They just decided back like in November. And I was like, oh, well, crap. So uh, that's why we're here. Um, anyway, my point is, is that the first events that are coming up uh, that have been entered a couple of days ago uh, are um, um, uh, an indie like mech game called Flames of Orion. And um, so, yeah, there's going to be a bunch of Flames of Orion demos, which is uh, in the dark and distant future. The stars have smoldered and burned. All that stood 
within the Orion sector has gone into darkness. Those that have not fled the sector battle over what little remains or have simply gone mad at the emptiness around them. Blood spills over the meaningless. In a time where humanity should be united, they are the greatest threat to themselves. And thus, the age of man is ended, left in the ashes of the flames of Orion. All will trudge forward into oblivion under mechanical tombs. See, these are all, this is, this is metal. Um, an age of darkness has begun. So yeah, it's a rules light tabletop mech combat game. Everything needed to learn to play will be provided. Max, blah, blah, blah. Um, so yeah, as Adam, uh, I think it's Schultz. He's, he ran, um, not last year, but two years ago, he ran a bunch of um, one page rule stuff at TMX. So now he's coming back here and Flames of Orion. I keep talking about the Hive Scum podcast. Flames of Orion is made by one of the guys from the Hive of Scum podcast. Uh, and then on Saturday night, there's another event that he's going to run too, which is going to be a longer event. And it's basically a, it's a hack of the last war, which is, there's like Forbidden Psalm is fantasy. Last war is World War One, like alternate history. And then there's a kill sample process, which is cyberpunk. And this is like a last war kind of hack, but it's going to be a longer event um, from like four till 10. And it's going to be kind of cool. So yeah, this is the first person to sign up. And this is the type of like indie stuff that I like to see personally. And so I'm really glad to see that's one of the first things that are signing up. But if you're interested, if you go to tabletopminions.org slash TMX, you can find out more about the event and the place. And if you want to, if you're in the area and you want to run some events and stuff like that, there's a little sign up form right here where you put in all your information. And then I take that information and I put it on the website. And, um, like not your email. I don't put the email on your website. We don't want to share your email, but I need the email so I can get back to you. Oh, and there's also a company that's going to reach out that's going to be a vendor too, who is just a guy who makes his own cool sculpts, you know, like for STLs and stuff like that. And he's just going to print a whole bunch of stuff and bring it and sell it and everything like that. So that's also a super cool indie thing that I'm, I'm, I'm digging lately. So there you go. Both of those things right there. Boom. Uh, let's see here. Where are we at? I'm way behind probably. Um, I'll gladly take headbutts. My cat's try to put her paw in my mouth to wake me up. See, that's not helpful either. <laughs> that's, yeah. Uh, find myself having to scale up my home built terrain from 56th scale to 48th scale so that the 56th scale figures fit better in it. Yeah. Brutal cities, MDF, Brut Brutopolis in six millimeter for battle tech. Oh, I haven't seen the six millimeter stuff. I've got 28 millimeter stuff from Brutal Cities. Hello from Oklahoma working on Shatterpoint core set. And that terrain is pretty great. The terrain is look, it does look really cool. Build, paint, or play, uh, if you only get to pick one. Um, probably paint, then. Uh, I got some Wargames Atlantic classic fantasy kits. First time for me, Lizardmen are nice, not too many pieces. The giant spiders kit is just sprue after sprue of individual legs. Yeah, that's a lot of legs on spiders, as it turns out. I thought about ordering that, but I'm like, eh, I don't know if I need spiders. I did get some of their um, crazy alien bugs, the harvesters. I bought some of those. Those guys are kind of cool. Um, the lizard man kit is awesome because not only is it like, yeah, fantasy lizards, but also there are heads in there that have gas masks and there are arms in there that have like AK 47s. So you can kind of make different kinds of lizard men if you want to, which is pretty cool. Looking at black side studios last night and kind of fell in love with their mall set would be super cool to run a chopping mall inspired game. Yeah, sure. Um, local 40 K tournament group uses a lot of foam core slot together buildings, nice, light, easy to transport. Sure. Um, Majestic 13, lacking modern terrain. I just cut out shapes of colored construction paper for trees and stuff. It got me playing quickly. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing wrong with doing that. I like the look of, you know, having uh, three-dimensional stuff and bespoke stuff sometimes or going through my kit and going, well, this will work for that and this will work for that and everything. But yeah, it, the, you know, you can also start, like somebody mentioned this in the comments on Friday, you can start playing with like, coins as as miniatures and pieces of paper as terrain like just to learn the rules and figure that stuff out initially it totally makes sense gradation of filth would be a good band name it would yeah gradient or, or gradation of filth or gradient of filth mm, that's a good question corvus belly does a lot of cool card terrain for infinity but it works for lots of systems i don't know if i've seen their card terrain um, let's see here. Found a hat box the other day. I'm now looking for uh, building a ruined refinery. Hmm, a hat box. Hello from soon to be 60 degrees in Chicago. Yeah, it's going to be weird. Uh, do you prefer grungy aesthetic, Adam? I had you pe uh, pegged as a punk guy. I mean, I like grunge, uh, like on my, you know, um, miniatures in my, uh, terrain and stuff like that, but it's like a different type of grunge in that situation. Best terrain for me is Sector Mechanicus refinery stuff from Kill Team. Well, 
Skullforge has those nice Helldiver models. I feel like Helldivers would be quite fun on tabletop. Hmm. When do you start teasing the next Snarling Badger game? Honestly, Vince and I might talk about that tonight because we do want to start like, you know, we have a tendency to come up with like, not a teaser per se, not like a teaser video, but like kind of words that we start to, to mention in certain things that, that, that relate to like, you know, back in uh, with Majestic 13, it was like near future, asymmetrical, skirmish, co-op, solo, blah, blah. Like I will tell you right now, just off the, off the, the rip, um, co-op, solo and versus and skirmish. That's what we're doing with this next game. It's going to be probably the, the last couple of keywords on every game that we do. I mean, technically, um, there is not co-op or solo for uh, Tanks for the Apocalypse, but that's just because we had to fit it in a real thin little book. And so this is versus only, but it's up to 10 players, which is fun too. So yeah, um, in general, most of definitely most of our big games that come out in spring will be, you know, co-op, solo, and uh, versus, so... Um, if you want to get away from it all, but not have to go far, try Door County for a couple of days. It's amazing. I haven't been to Door County like on a, th like for like, for like a vacation-y type thing. I haven't been since I was a little kid. Um, my, we went with my mom and dad and my brother and we went up there and messed around when I was probably, I don't know, maybe middle school. Maybe I was in high school. I don't remember. But, um, yeah, but it's, it is cool though. Yeah. Anything called a super brood is never a good thing. Mm. Cicadas. I like hearing them drone incessantly. Yeah, oh yeah. Frontline Gaming and Blackside Studios both have cool pre-painted MDF terrain. Uh, well, I knew about Blackside. I didn't know that uh, they had pre-painted MDF terrain from Frontline. That's cool. Monster Fight Club has pine trees. I knew they were working on them. I don't know if I didn't know they were out yet. That's pretty cool. Tasbury Designs is a nice set for full table ruins. It could be used for anything in the normal scale. Thanks to how generic they look. Yeah, yeah. Which is smart, you know, it makes, it makes sense. Got many a tree from pet stores. Yeah, that makes sense. Tabletop Minions brought to you by Zenny Eyewear. These are tech, well, these are actually not Zenny. These are from a company called Zelu. Like Z-E-E-L-O-O-L. -O -O -L. I, I don't know. My wife had got a bunch of, she'd got a bunch of glasses from them. The ones that are showing up later are from Zenny. But these, this, this pair I thought I would try out is from Zelu. So got to shake your fist at the cats well you know um any good storage ideas for 3d per uh, terrain um i just kind of keep mine on shelves which means you got to dust them once in a while but um one advantage is to smaller table sizes that games are much shorter with some of the rule systems you can play out a mini narrative campaign in a single evening yeah yeah for sure Finally got to catch the stream. Just wanted to say your videos have got me into wargaming. I've been playing some Grimdark Future Firefight and Scratch Building Terrain. Thanks for all your content. Well, that's very ni nice of you to say there. I appreciate that. I'm glad to hear you're getting into the hobby and Grimdark Future Firefight. Also very cool. Um, yeah, I think it's a good game to get into, to, especially, uh, you know, starting out and everything. Like, yeah. Where in Canada? Where in Canada? Oh, 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 I'm going to a trade show in... It's just over the border from Buffalo. Niagara on the Lake? I think that's what it is. Niagara on the Lake. That's where I'm going to be. Uh, it's a trade show for one of the Canadian distributors. I believe they're called Lion Rampant. I think that's right. Yeah. I'm thinking a lot about the creative process lately and what motivates me to work on a project. It is more often than not an image in a book or magazine that seems to plant the seed. I'll be honest, playing Helldivers recently it really makes me want to build some pieces of like terrain that look like Helldivers stuff. There's a lot of those like sci-fi buildings in that um, game are very much just like a rectangle, kind of, you know, and like like they've got some texturing and some sort of stuff and there's like an air conditioning unit and jazz like that. But they're very just like, here's a rectangle, which kind of makes sense. You wouldn't make a crazy building that's like super angular and weird and nuts and all that kind of stuff when it's just a modular thing that's supposed to be dropped on like some alien world for a place for people to sleep or whatever. You would just be like, clunk, there you go, box, you know, and that's, yeah. So um, I've been, yeah, I've actually there's spent time like just walking around some of those buildings looking at them and going, I wonder if I should make a video about making a piece of terrain based off of this game. Kind of cool. So if the four Army Painter Factory team are the Fantastic Four, or maybe the four Horsemen of the Apocalypse, I don't know. That's a good question. Uh, which one are you? 
or the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse, a more apt analogy. I don't know. Uh, maybe a Four Horsemen of the Paintopolis. I don't know. I don't know. We haven't talked about it. Uh, let's see here. I use base coat foam with a mix of PVA glue and cheap craft paint. Yeah, I mean, or, um, well, you can use Mod Podge too. That's generally the way you do it. But if you want to skip a step, then using a, a rattle can that won't eat the foam is also a good way too. Kelly, how you doing? I always fit the largest possible game table. You can always play small games on a big table, but not big games on a small table. Well, not with that attitude. I mean, I, I get what you're saying, but yeah. I enjoyed that something like an emote wheel can bring people together. Sure. Uh, I'm a big fan of yours, and thank you for your amazing and entertaining videos. I appreciate that. Just got an Army Painter Mega Set 2.0 for my birthday. It is true uh, with the 2.0 paints that they don't reactivate, no wet blending. Oh, the speed paints. Um, yeah, they don't really, like, if it's still wet, you know, when you, you look at it and see it's still wet, and then, you know, you've put on blue, and now you grab, like, some red, and then want to blend them together on the model, it'll kind of work if you're trying to head towards a purple or, like, a gradient or whatever. But they don't really activate. Like once they're dry, dry. They, I haven't. I mean, I barely ever had a reactivation problem with the old stuff. Um, I mentioned it in the video where I initially did about the original speed paints. I was working on that lizard man, and I had done most of his scales and all that stuff in a blue, like magic blue speed paint. And then I, you know, I had gotten it onto the spinal spikes or whatever. And then I was painting the spinal spikes like an ivory color with just a regular opaque paint. And I noticed on one of them, as I was putting on the opaque paint, it started to turn slightly blue. And I'm like, oh, I didn't let it dry enough. That's literally the only time that I ever had problems. Otherwise, I guess I just don't paint in a way that causes the reactivation. I mean, if I'm going to do speed paint, generally, then I'm just going to maybe dry brush over the top of it. I'm not going to really get crazy with it and start putting a bunch of other stuff over the top of it too frequently. But anyway, um, yeah, but no, the new stuff has been formulated to do that even less, which some people are kind of bummed about, to be perfectly frank with you, because some people are like, I kind of like the blending. <laughs> you know what I mean? I've heard a couple of people say that, but um, let's see here. I need to get around to try this. I bought a refillable air powered spray can, which lets you use your own hobby paints and primers. Oh, that's pretty cool. I should look into that. Um, do you play cello? I don't. No, my wife does. That's my wife's cello. His name is Nick Romando. Um, there was some discussion of GW and third-party retailers in the recent streams Ash has been doing with his mate. Hmm. Yeah, I've watched a couple of those. Uh, I started watching one just recently where they were talking about 3D printing. And um, when I go to... Um, when I go to that trade show in Canada, I actually reached out to Ash and I was like, hey, we should get together. And so I'm hoping maybe we can do a talk like that on his channel. I think that'd be a lot of fun. My favorite terrain is the long discontinued Age of Sigmar Citadel of the Ever Chosen, essentially a massive chaos stronghold. Oh, I remember that stuff. Yeah, like right when Age of Sigmar first came out and they're like, hey, we made this cool piece of terrain. It's like $1,000 or whatever if you buy the entirety of it. Yeah, it was massive. Morning, Uncle Adam from a warm and sunny SoCal. Anyone got tips on how to make that cracked glacier snow base? Um, check out Vince's channel. Look for uh, Vince Ventrella frozen bases probably on YouTube, and I'm sure you'll find it. He's got a, at least one, if I can, maybe two different uh, uh, tutorials about it. That's what I would tell you to do. Um, let's see here. Got to say the Grill Adventure Games did a great video about the importance of GW to local uh, retailers, uh, but also the other edge of stocking GW as a local retailer. Sure, yeah. I'm working on my OPR rat army. Nice. Love crafting my own terrain, but using 3D prints to augment that. Yeah, I mean, I think that's the thing too, is that if you can do like, like, you know, do the walls and stuff like that out of relatively simple materials, uh, whether you're using foam core or Sintra or whatever, and then use 3D printed stuff to like, embellish it and 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 you know make it fancier that's i think the way to go frankly um reaper and whiz kids are the pocket money solution yeah that's true it's been that season in life for me as well need to get back into schedule it keeps me happier they're playing a lot of xenos rampant good game figure agnostic i just don't a lot of the 
Osprey games, the hardcovers, just got a lot going on in there sometimes. And that sometimes keeps me away. The little blue books like that, I can, I enjoy Zona Alpha because it's one of those skinnier blue books. Um, and Gaslands was originally a blue book. So even though they did make a fancy version as well, I still kind of, I don't know, I was able to, to swallow a little bit better on that one because it was one of those skinny little blue books. But like the big ones, like Lion Rampant, Dragon Rampant, now Xenos Rampant, the fact that also they're army style games too, I'm just not that interested in. I, I want a skirmish game generally. So, but I own other games by them too, which should be right up my alley. And then you start reading it, and you're like, man, there's so much in here. Like Scrappers. I don't know if you ever saw Scrappers from um, uh, Osprey. Uh, it's like a post apocalyptic kind of, you know, skirmishy style game, probably from 2017, maybe 2016. I don't remember exactly, 2018, somewhere in there, pre pandemic. Um, you know, really well designed as far as like visual design and all that stuff. They always do great work with that stuff, but I'm like just paging through it and there's just way more detail than you really need sometimes that, that, than I would prefer personally. Let me say that. More detail than I would prefer in a, in a skirmish game in that situation, so. um, Let's see here. Do, do, do. Uh, hello from New York. Agree on the other games. Currently planning out my next steps for a multi ar multi game army. Nice. Sarcasm on. How can GW prices be too high if they always sell out? Yeah, I got a lot of those responses too uh, in the uh, tipping point video. Um, and then I would always respond because they're not making enough because they're having production problems. I should have just copied and pasted is what I should have done. Eureka is more of a pocket money solution. Hmm. Idea for a future video or short or, short or just a post? Top 10 viewed videos. Hmm. Uh, good morning from Montreal in La Belle province in Quebec. I'm slap chopping my Wood Elf Blood Bowl team or trying to. Nice. Recently finished a P40. Oh, nice. Yeah, I haven't done models like, like airplanes or anything like that in a long, long time. Um, one of the crafting channels did a cool video about hiding or covering the flaws of MDF terrain. Yeah, no, you can definitely do some stuff, some work on that, on the edges and things like where the kind of the hinges, the hinging kind of goes together, the tab and slot thing. There's a lot of things you can do to kind of hide that stuff that makes it real well, makes it work real well, I guess. If I spray from my can, my fire alarms go off. Usually there's real car parts, but if it's too much dust, yeah, no, yeah, I can definitely see it. Yeah, making the um, thing go off the, the smoke detector. Um, I don't think Eureka has a storefront and everyone's so obsessed with GW. No game store is ever going to get any Eureka. Yeah, I mean, and I don't blame the game stores, you know, like everyone's while you'll get game stores that will, you'll walk into that have a lot of like, I, where was I? Oh, I was at Nova and there was a game store, like a retailer that was there that had so, like they had GW stuff and whatever, but they had so much uh, War Games Atlantic stuff. Which if they're in, if you're in a big city, you could probably get away with it a little bit easier. But they had so much of that stuff that's just right there, you know, in stock. And I would just assume that they probably have that stuff in stock at their store, you know. So they probably just grabbed a bunch from stuff. Or they could be just one of those people that just goes to shows. But yeah, it um it was nice to see. It really was. Uh, is things of Orion six millimeter scale, so you can uh, battle attack max. I think so. Yeah. Uh, I think of making some house templates like paper terrain, maybe with a cricket. Does anyone have experience doing it? Hmm, I've not, no. Um, just had some success basing paper terrain on vinyl floor tiles. Oh, that's kind of cool. Cricket terrain works well with chipboard. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Tuning in from Ireland, and you're the perfect procrastination tool while I try to avoid editing my latest video. Well, that's that's fine, you know. Uh, what's a good way to seal MDF? Um, the main way that the guys at uh, uh, Death Ray Designs tell me to do it is they use a black enamel spray now. Um, let me see if I can remember what it is called. I'm going to look it up on my phone. I have a couple cans of it down in the back hall. Um, I'm looking for Joe. That one. Uh, Rust Oleum Professional High Performance Enamel Spray Paint. Uh, this is the stuff that they use at 
death ray designs and it is their favorite um can i get a big version of this i don't know if this helps but it comes in a tall silver can taller than normal rattle cans it's rust oleum high performance enamel 15 minute fast dry any angle spray uh, and it is uh, an enamel, and he says that they just spray that onto MDF, and then, then that's it, and then they they paint after that. Um, so, yeah, that stuff is that's what I've been using these kind of tall cans. I can get them at the local Lowe's or whatever, you like that kind of stuff. Um, if you don't have access to that, then people will tell you, oh, use like PVA glue and water and all that kind of stuff. But the thing is about the water is that if you do that on MDF, it'll soak into the MDF and can sometimes swell the MDF, which you don't like to look up or it'll mess with the surface a little bit. So um, it's a little bit harder sometimes, but they swear by that stuff now. Because usually what happens with MDF is you spray like something on it and it just absorbs. But for some reason, this enamel primer, um, the high, high, whatever, high performance stuff doesn't seem to absorb into the um, very thirsty uh, MDF. It's uh, so that's that's very cool. War Games Atlantic Halflings. Yep, those are great guys too. I use Aeroflight dope with a little acetone. I don't. That sounds flammable. Um, I saw Filth Gradient last year when they were supporting Null Spill. Nice. OPR has some paper terrain that you can print and glue together. I got some from them, and then it's helped me to get started before I can build my own pieces. Nice. Am I the only one who looks at box art for minutes and then thinks, screw this, I'll give it my own spin with the box art color in mind? I mean, no, probably not. Um, let's see here. I made wood templates from a couple boxes of model railroad trees. Glued to stiff card. Nice. Store terrain and photocopy or paper boxes. Build my inserts to stack inside. I get the boxes from work. That makes sense, yeah. I'm in Illinois and keep hearing about the cicadas. I keep meaning to buy a couple of tennis rackets so I can swap them down as I go in and out of the house this summer. I mean, I don't know if you want to swap them. I guess it's maybe, you know, they're bugs, I guess. Um, made it for a change. Have you heard of Novus Malum from Enviro Games? Worth a look. I've not heard of either of those things, no. Lion Rampant is the distributor my FLGS in Ottawa uses. Oh, cool. All of the STLs from Thunderhead Studios. I have some of those for my Steel Rift game. I bought, well, I didn't buy the STLs. I just actually bought printed stuff. I got them at um, Adepticon. I think I got them at Adepticon or Gen Con. I got them at some convention. <laughs> but they're um, like sci-fi, like six millimeter buildings that I'll be using for um, uh, Steel Rift. They are primed and initially airbrushed. So some of them are darker, some of them are lighter, stuff like that, but I haven't gone beyond that yet, unfortunately. But Far future Quonset huts. Well, yeah, that's basically kind of the case. Where can I find good terrain for Steel Rift other than Death Ray Design's website? Um, Thunderworks or Thunderhead Studios or whatever. Yeah, they also do um, some stuff like that. I mean, you could also use um, Battletech buildings from, well, anybody who makes Battletech buildings, but one of the big ones right now uh, Gale Force 9 slash Battlefront, uh, they make a bunch of pre-painted um, Battletech style buildings. Now they are in a hex shape, like they've designed to go on a hex map, but I don't know if that part, because if that's part separate or not. Hmm. Um, but yeah, I know they've got stuff like that too. Is there a good speed paint option for undead and or Drakari white skin? I'm afraid to use holy white, but that seems to be it. Holy white is basically super light gray. So what I would do is you could use holy white and then once it dries, you could go back in and dry brush some white over the top again to maybe bring out the, the raised parts even more. Um, yeah, otherwise, but for otherwise regular undead, if you wanted them to look a little cool, like a little greenish maybe, or even a little bluish, you would just add a little bit of that to the, maybe the holy white, like a little bit. Um, People talking about Quonset Huts. Indie game that has got me thinking now is Void Admiral. Guerrilla Ministry Games did a review last week, a Scratch Builder's Dream. I think I saw the thumbnail for that and I haven't got a chance to watch it yet. I remember back in the 90s covering foam with cheap indoor acrylic flat house paint. Then you could just 
Blastoise spray paint all day long doesn't get a hard shell like PVA and craft paint. Sure, yeah. Um, sweet, you're on again. I keep forgetting what every other Sunday happens. How was LVO? I had some buddies fly down from Vancouver for the event. It was good. Yeah, no, LVO was good. It was, um, I was concerned it wasn't going to be, uh, not the event itself, but the location, the hotel. Um, when LVO started up again after the pandemic in 2022, I believe it was, um, it was their first year at the Rio. And I was, I, a lot of bad news came out of that, that convention because the Rio had like one restaurant open, maybe two. And so it was like really hard to get food. And plus it's not near anything. So people were doing Uber Eats and all this kind of stuff just to get food. And it was a real mess. Um, so I was kind of concerned it was going to be still like that. And by, you know, 2024, roll in there and all the restaurants are open. They also added four or five new ones. Like they had, they opened up a new wing kind of that was like a food court. So there's like a chicken place, it was a sushi place, there was a cheesesteak place, burger place. They were all kind of like, like a food court, like in a mall, you know. Um, yeah, so no, the, the place was actually really good. And they're like updating things. They're going to start updating the rooms, all that jazz. And it was good. So we had a, we had a good time. Um, let's see here. I'd like to see GW re-release their 28 millimeter Mighty Fortress from the 90s. It was made out of styrofoam. I don't know that they would ever do anything out of styrofoam ever again. I don't know. Can't bring myself to buy terrain. I just enjoy scavenging and crafting too much. There's nothing wrong with that. Absolutely. I love the train that came out with the dust uh, the buildings and the Quonset huts. They were super durable. Oh, yeah. I've got some of those dust Quonset huts down in the basement there, Lee. I do. I got cheated out of Gaslands this week. Our host went snowmobiling. Lots of our cats headbutting is a way for them to bond. It's strange that he does it at five o'clock in the morning and he's trying to get into my, he's basically trying to get into my mouth is what it feels like. Cause I'm laying there and then he's just like chirping and making lots of noise. Cause that's what he does in the mornings. And then he's just, his head is just like, she's <laughs> like, I'm like, what are you doing? Oh, Rex. I uh, never stopped building model planes. That's where I started and where I always return to. Sure. We'll continue to state this is my most favorite channel that gives up many hours on a Sunday to spend with us. I mean, it's only two hours, but still. Uh, thank you for creativity and time, sir. Absolutely. I appreciate that, Blake. Or Blake's pipes. Anyway. Um, let's see here. How many games will we be running at TMX this year? We'll see. Um, right now, like I said, I just opened up the website like last week because of issues. Uh, but it's up now. And so we've got... Currently, you know, we've got um, one event, uh, well, two events, technically. One event that's going to be repeated over and over and over Saturday and Sunday, and then one event that's just on Saturday night, both by the same guy. But other people will probably start doing stuff too. Um, I'm sure that we'll be doing some demos of, um, uh, well, the new game, when that, you know, that'll be something. Um, potentially some of the old stuff. Maybe we'll do a big tank battle with the uh, Tanks of the Apocalypse. I think that'd be fun for people who... You know, are going to be bringing or making tanks maybe for Adepticon if they're you know want to also come to this. Well, that'd be kind of a fun thing to do too. I'll, Lord knows I'll have terrain. Um, what else? Um, I would love to see some. Uh, I would love to see some people running some uh, one page rule stuff there too. I think it'd be a lot of fun. Let's see here. Uh, I was not into wargaming at the time to buy the ever chosen terrain. There's a guy selling it for three thousand dollars on eBay, though. Ooh, ooh, yeah, no, I, that's probably way too much. You probably three D print something awful close to it. That would be probably pretty cool and a lot cheaper. Afternoon from a rainy brigand, or is it bridge end? I mm. uh, just finished a Sherman Easy Eight with a Brad Pitt lookalike. Oh, that's fun. Morning from Virginia. Just purchased my first box of Primaris Intercessors and a Death Watch Kill Team box to start my very first army, and I've chosen Salamanders. Nice, nice. Not to mention cars and tanks and open boats and warships and giant uh, and robots. Wow. Um, Gale Force Nine Battletech buildings have removable hex bases. Oh, cool. Okay, I wasn't sure. Sea Dog Game Studios also makes buildings can be scaled up to your needs. Sure. 
Have you heard of Quar's War? I hear there are anteater men and squirrels. I don't know that there are squirrels. Well, maybe there are squirrels. I don't know. I know there are anteater men. Uh, I am waiting on uh, the new Quar's War starter box being sent to me. I reached out to the folks at Wargames Atlantic because I've been interested in Quar's War for a long time. And I even bought some of the stuff years ago f directly from Zombie Smith at LVO, strangely enough, uh, 2017 maybe. But back then the models were all metal. And I'm not inherently against metal models, but I will admit the Quar, who are like these kind of, they kind of got like beer guts and they're like bipedal dudes, but they have like an anteater head kind of, and they usually wear these hats. Anyway, um, that little skinny neck and head was the separate part on every one of these models. And it's really hard to glue a tiny little skinny head into the neck hole on the body and make it stay. And so I had bad luck with the models, unfortunately, and it didn't work out. But now that they're going to be plastic, it's going to be way easier. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, so yeah, in theory, it's on its way. Um, so I'm looking forward to it. Clash of Rifles should be released this week here in the States. Can't wait. Yeah, yeah. Basically, the idea is that it's like it's a, it's a bit of a World War I kind of vibe, except instead of humans fighting against each other, it's just these weird sort of alien. It's like a different planet. It's a different world or whatever. And it's these weird kind of alien anteater type folks. But it's, uh, it's just got a really super cool art style, and I'm very interested in it. A lot of plastic boxes from packaging or styrene make a great basis for scratch build. Yeah. Yesterday I had a new channel subscriber plant a firm seed of a space marine army in an undeniable fertile lore soil. So after being largely not interested at all in 10th. Hmm, well, that's cool. Uh, Dark Krakens. Ooh. So much printer packaging is hard plastic of, of interesting shapes. Yeah, sometimes you can get some of that kind of stuff. Um, one of the old Blood Bowl pitch was styrofoam. My dad gave me his stuff after he convinced me to give it a whirl. Nice. Did OPR have a good TA Max last year? Any chance they are trying uh, trying again this year? Um, Param was in the chat before. I don't know if he is now, but I know that I, I actually reached out to him about TA Max after I launched the website and everything like that. I think the problem is, is that it's the same weekend as the UK Games Expo. So I think that they're going to be over there. But I'm hoping that maybe they've got somebody like a local, like a street team or somebody who might come and run some demos or something like that. We'll see. But yeah, the, the downside is that uh, evidently it's the same weekend as um, UKGE, the UK, UK Games Expo. Um, with everything else going on in your life, how often do you actually get a game in? If you're anything like the rest of us, probably not as often as you like. Yeah, generally not as often as I would like, but it's it's generally okay. Um one of my plans for this year, to some degree, is I want to get my wife a bit more involved. So um, she likes to game. She likes being, you know, she likes board games and stuff like that. And I mean, she's probably right playing Civilization VI on her PC upstairs right now. So it's not like a, a real hard sell. I don't know that she'll ever be interested in the craft of it. I don't know if she'll be ever be interested in building and painting. But if I build and paint the stuff and she plays with me, that would be just totally fine. So I'm kind of working on that, but it's also partially getting, I got to get my gaming space figured out better um, so that we can do that a little bit easier. That's part of the problem. And it needs to be downstairs because we can't do it up here because then cats. Um, so yeah, definitely uh, the problem. Uh, joined at neck hole. Am I in, what are we talking about? Uh, so there's this, there's this uh, series of games or it's a game that's been out for a long time. That was that's called this Quar's War, and Quar is spelled Q U A R, and they're the Quar are these crazy little creatures. They're like, you know, two arms, two legs, bipedal, but they all have kind of a big beer gut, sort of. They're all kind of like you know, and they're basically kind of like what would happen if anteaters took over. You know what I mean? So they have these kind of skinny necks, and then they kind of go with these long noses. Um, Anyway, long story short is uh, they've been around for a long time. A company called Zombie Smith Miniatures has been making them, but they used to be done in metal. And I found it difficult to get the, the head to glue into the, like the neck hole thing and stay in the way that I wanted. Um, but now they're working with um, War Games Atlantic and War Games Atlantic is making them in plastic. So um, they should be available in the states in the next couple of weeks or the next week or so so i'm very much looking forward to that because i'm going to, i think it's gonna be a lot easier for me to glue those guys together when they're in plastic and then i'm interested in kind of giving them a play 
They are portly. That's a good word for them, portly. You going to Adepticon this year? Absolutely. Absolutely. If so, we are looking forward to seeing you. Well, I look forward to seeing you too, uh, Coach. I hope so. Uh, it's been a while, I think. Uh, what terrain projects are you working on right now? Um, I'm working on some stuff I can't talk about right now because I want to make it into a video. Um, but I'm not... Like, I've got some stuff in progress, but the stuff that I was painting all day yesterday was not terrain. It was some models that I'm also working on for a video that I'll talk about soon. Um, the terrain that I'll be working on a little bit going forward is that I can talk about is I'm making, I'm painting a bunch of 3D printed terrain for tanks for the apocalypse. Cause Vince and I are running three games of tanks for the apocalypse, uh, in, you know, all together at the same time, uh, on Thursday at Adepticon. I did just get a message. I wonder if it came from my friend who is 3D printing the terrain. Come on. Mm, it did not. No. So hopefully today yeah, I can go pick that stuff up uh, because my my plan is hopefully that on Tuesday it's supposed to get kind of warm here. It's supposed to be almost 60. And my thought was to go outside and just give these ruins all a nice dusting of rattle can primer. And then I'll do the rest of the priming and all that kind of stuff inside. But just having that rattle can primer on there for the airbrush primer to be able to hold on to. Plastic terrain, I feel, needs a little bit more love because you have a tendency to be a little bit more rough with terrain. And so if you can use a rattle can for that initial pass, it sticks to plastic better than airbrush does. So um, you sound like something Ralph Bashke could do. They've got a bit of a Ralph Bashke vibe if you look at the artwork and stuff like that online for sure. Um, Quar would make like beaky space marine army. Yeah, they would. Yeah, that's true. No guy who's excited for plastic quar looks interesting. Yeah, no, definitely for sure. Morning from Virginia, priming my League of Votan and about to start planning my Sagittar Hecaton kit bash. The word Hecaton sounds familiar, and I don't know why, but I don't know the rest of it. Um, good morning, hello Adam. It has been a while since I caught you. How is your mom doing? Ah, uh, she's doing okay. Uh, I talked to her yesterday. Um, she called. I talked to her for about an hour uh, while I was painting. Um, so that was convenient. Um, had my headphones in my, so it was like, I was just like listening to a podcast and then all of a sudden it was just like call from, and then I just could switch over to that. And then when I got done and then it, you know, went right back. So that was nice actually. And it was hands-free so I could keep painting and all that kind of stuff. But, um, yeah, no, she's doing okay though. Um, we were just over there for dinner. Well, we brought her a pizza. <laughs> we brought her a pizza last week. And so, um, Yeah. It's going to be warm, almost 60. That's our LA low. Well, I'm in Wisconsin and it's February. So normally, like, okay, this weekend, which is the last weekend in February, there is almost always a local gaming convention about an hour away. And I've gone to it many times. It's called Fire and Ice uh, Gaming Convention. And I've gone to it a bunch of different times. I haven't gone for years now, unfortunately, but I used to go to it a lot. I remember sometime between 2007 and 2010, and I say that because... That's where my wife and I were living at that time. I remember waking up in that apartment and being like, okay, I'm planning on going to Fire and Ice. I got all my stuff packed and uh, I had a look at the temperature and it was negative 25 outside Fahrenheit. And that was not the wind chill. That was the regular temperature. <laughs> and I was like, eek, yikes. Well, right now I'm looking at the temperature and it's 43 degrees outside and it's going to hit 50 today. So, you know, it's, it's a lot of a difference in that situation. Normally, Februarys are more like really cold and they're not like they are this year but like i said this year there's definitely a uh, it's the whole um el nino thing which is kind of messing up a good portion of um the uh the north american weather pattern uh hecaton is from the gw votan army oh yeah, yeah yeah like the word i'm like i recognize that word but yeah yeah i i do yeah the old hecaton Moving from the North Pacific, you're going to work on 3D printed astronauts for Lunar today. Oh, nice. Nice. Waiting for a big March snowstorm. Man, I'm hoping we don't. I got to be honest. I just, I could totally do it with, have, like, the amount of snow that we had this year is fine. Like, if we just had a very little snow like that, it would be great. But it, my wife is always like, yeah, but the snow is kind of important. It helps the plants and this and that and all that kind of stuff. And I'm like, well, yeah, but do we need plants really? I don't know. Um... Yeah. So anyway, uh, 
it's been weird not really having to shovel or snowblow once. I think I used the snowblower twice this entire winter, which is good so far. And we'll knock on wood that maybe I don't have to use it again. I heart El Nino. Nice. Um, we're just in Milwaukee a few weeks ago. Any game stores you recommend? Um, I'm north of Milwaukee. Um, Milwaukee's game stores. The only ones that I really know are... Uh, board Game Barrister, who are not super into miniatures. Uh, I got a friend who works for Board Game Barrister, and um, they lean a lot more into RPGs and board games, but, uh, you know, hence it's in the name and all that. But I don't know of other, like, shops in Milwaukee besides them, now that I come to think of it. Um, y if you are gonna, like, if you come way north, then there's Chimera Games, uh, Chimera Hobbies and Games or whatever there in Fond du Lac and in Appleton. Um, there's a bunch of stores in Appleton, a bunch of stores, well, two stores in Oshkosh, uh, at least a store or two in Mina or maybe a Menasha. I don't know. There's a, yeah, there's like Wisconsin's got a lot of stores in it. Um, you know, if you're looking for GW stores specifically like Warhammer stores, there's one in Milwaukee that's Leighton Plaza. Uh, there's one in Madison that's Fitchburg, technically, which is just outside of Madison. There's West Bend. There's De Pere, which is over by Green Bay. Um, I think there's maybe one in Kenosha, too, but I'm not 100% sure on that Kenosha one. Where I live, fire is more important to plants than snow. I can see that. Uh, had to shovel snow, but once this so far this winter, well, it's not too bad. Oh, Games Universe. I totally forgot about Games Universe. Yeah, there's a bunch of those. That's They are much more into work, uh, miniatures and stuff. Games Universe. Yeah, yeah. There's there's two of them. Okay, I know there's... I can't think of the names. Is one in Franklin? Uh, I can't remember, but uh, I actually got a friend that works at Games Universe. I forget about that. Yeah, no, Games Universe is a good one in the Milwaukee area. I forgot about that. Um, what if the terrain was the army fighting the war? Whoa. Blowing my mind over here. Um, like city fortresses attacking each other with our, our missiles? Well, there was that movie where the cities were driving around shooting each other. Mortal Engines? Was that what it was called? It looked crazy. Um, I like to always to check out local shops when I travel. Nice. In the news here of drought this growing season due to the lack of snow. Yeah, I mean, I could see that for sure. Um, it's always something though, isn't it? Yeah, I suppose so. Um, yeah, so I've got some ideas for some terrain. Well, I've already started, I've built two. One is half painted. The other one's not painted, but it's primed. Um, and so the video that I'm working on, I'm going to need to build not an entire third piece. My plan is to build a bit to stick onto another piece of terrain. You'll understand it when you see it, but it's just kind of a cool concept and I'm, I'm very interested in um, seeing what people think about it. So that's in progress. Um, it's going to be kind of interesting. I think, I think that I've not seen anything quite like it online. So I'm going to be very interested to see how it, how it goes. Um, it doesn't work for all genres. It's mostly a sci-fi thing, but you know, still uh, not completely, I guess, I guess it could be for modern as well, but it's, leans a bit more towards your sci-fi stuff. Um, let's see here. Oh yeah, Warp Storm. That's right. I forgot about Warp Storm too. Yeah, they just they they're relatively recent. And I've never been to the store. I saw them. They had a booth. Warp Storm had a booth at uh, Dragonfall, which is a convention in. Lake Geneva, Wisconsin, which is where Dungeons and Dragons started. And well, it's where Gen Con started. Um, and yeah, so uh, that's a fun little miniatures convention, uh, Dragonfall. And um, yeah, Warpstorm runs the 40K tournament at Dragonfall. And they had a booth. And you're right, they did have um, uh, Steel Rift stuff there too. That's really cool. Um. Let's see here. Thank God I had a snow shovel and spray salt and sand on the Dutch highway at night one time this year. Sure. Just got back from Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico. Mm. Um, Puerto Rico. Puerto. I think I'm 
well, that could be a different place. I have no idea. Uh, there was a game store a block from the rental car office. Sadly, timing prevented me from checking it out. Nice. I don't, yeah, I don't know that I've been to too many game stores. Like, where did I travel? I didn't go to a game store at all while I was in Vegas. I didn't go anywhere when I was in Vegas. We went to, we left the building exactly one time. Like, you know, you, you fly, you land, you take a car in, Uber or whatever, I think it Lyft. And then... We didn't go anywhere until I left again, except for one night. One night we had dinner, uh, like a just like a all of us uh, army painter, you know, folks and whatnot. And um, we went to a place. Uh, we we ate on the roof, like you know, we weren't just up there by ourselves. It was like you know, it was a thing that you could do. Um, but it was surprisingly kind of chilly. Uh, so it was, um, if I remember correctly, Phil. Uh, the Glacial Geek wore shorts, which he probably wasn't happy about by the end of the dinner, but he, he might have been okay. Um, but yeah, for sure. It's, uh, it, it was, it was, uh, it was good burgers, but yeah, otherwise we just stayed in because now there's places to eat, you know, in the place. Um, so that was really cool. Uh, Uncle Adam, will you be trying the old world? No, no. I'm not a fan of, um, rank and flank style games so um you know when you're moving them in like regiments like in that so like old world um conquest last argument of kings kings of war um like lots of stuff like that i'm not you know like against them like those people shouldn't be making that stuff i know there's an audience out there for it but it's not me so yeah i've just never been super interested in any kind of game that requires me to move my people like in blocks or rectangles or anything along those lines. So yeah, it's just not my kind of gaming. Um, secondly, I don't know. I just, I know there's a lot of people that have got a lot of nostalgia for the old models and there's a little part of me that kind of wants to buy a box of skeletons, but I don't know. They're just so like, they have those giant heads and those giant hands and everything like that, which is sort of funny. And it's almost like, like a joke, but you know, and I already have some, I've already got some that are painted for, that I've had for years. I bought them used from somebody else. They had already built them and they had them on square bases. And I just took them off the square bases and put them on rounds. Cause I was going to use them in, um, uh, well, originally I was going to use them in, um, I thought about using them, in, I think in the age of Sigmar army. And then I ended up just using them a lot when I would go to do demos at conventions and I would teach people how to play, um, song of, uh, blades and heroes. Because what I would do is I would set up where each player who would come to play, I would give them three miniatures, like three heroes. There was like three dwarves and three elves and three humans and blah, blah, blah. And those were uh, pre-painted models from Dungeons and Dragons. Like Wizards of the Coast used to make pre-painted Dungeons and Dragons minis for this game that they called Dungeons and Dragons Skirmish or something like that. And, um, and you used to buy them, like you'd get them in a box and you didn't know what you were going to get. Kind of like, you know, like hero clicks. You'd open the box, you'd be like, oh, look, it's all mind flayers again or whatever. And you'd be like, I just wanted skeletons. I just want skeletons. Could you guys do some jump? Anyway, so um, I have a bunch of those guys. But the thing is, is because just like with uh, hero clicks, they're nearly indestructible. Like they're kind of bendy rubber. The paint is on there, like baked on there or something. I don't know. So I don't have a problem with people using those i'm like okay you're gonna run this, the dwarves and you're gonna run these guys and here's your stats and all that information and then and then i run they're all fighting against a bunch of uh skeletons a bunch of undead and they're all being run by a necromancer and so i run all those guys so those guys are all my fancy skeletons that i've painted you know and everything like that and then that way i touch those and you don't touch those and then you know it's fine um so yeah uh I have a bunch of those skeletons for that. And I also have some mantic skeletons as well. I kind of mix and match them together. They work okay. Um, but yeah, I just, again, the rank and flank thing's not for me. And the predominantly mostly like models that are old enough to drink, like those, a lot of those, like some of those skeletons, like if you look at the sprue, it says 2003 on them. You know what I mean? And those are in the new boxes of, uh, the old world. So yeah, that's not a thing I could see myself getting into. Did I get another message? Oh, talking about the terrain. Uh, I'm streaming until 11. 
after that. Cool. Not a problem. Um, let's see here. I love battle systems, fully painted cardboard terrain, but the acid house terrain that uses no clips is my new favorite. It's just pop up and go. I don't think I'm familiar with that. I saw a company at LVO that had like pop-up terrain, but I don't know if it was called Acid House. Maybe I'm thinking of something else. I'm not done with the marching band simulators either. Yeah. Looking like some Dio de, de Mortos props. A little bit. Yeah, they're definitely in the face they do, for sure. Uh, building a 2003 Metal Tomb King's Casket of Souls. Yeah, that sounds like fun. Rank and flank make the best scenes. Cavalry smashing into infantry. It's really cinematic to me. Yeah, it's just, I don't, it's just not what I'm interested in. I'll be honest, I'm also a lot more interested in sci-fi, and they don't really do that too much in sci-fi. So, um, yeah. Um, War Master is the game they should have redone. The scale is better for rank and flank. Yeah. The meaning to ask, would square base models work for Warcry? Was gonna base all my Warcry models for Old World? I mean, if you wanted it to, sure. I don't. There's. I guess if you went to a tournament, the tournament might be like, nope, they need to be on round bases. But they they probably wouldn't. But that's the only situation in which you like have to do anything. You could certainly just use square bases and play those guys with um with with, with uh you know Warcry. It would, it would work just fine. Uh, Necromunda kill team, boarding action, multi-level labyrinth is more fun than just a couple of line blocking ruins. Sure. I'm finally watching live. Well, that's good to hear. Uh, really enjoy your channel. I appreciate that. Have you ever used multiple games for one campaign? Thinking of running Zona Alpha with Gaslands in the same game for my local group? It's a cool idea. I've not done it, but I've heard of people doing that where there's like maybe a, a spaceship game that you play where there's like a battle in space and then it kind of moves down onto the planet and now it's more of a skirmish style game. Or, you know, you play like a big army game and then something happens and then at some point it breaks off and now you've got a skirmish game too where it's happening like, you know, next session or whatever. It's like this group left and did this. Like the big army made it so that this could happen so this group could go over here to then have to fight these guys and to do this thing and to get into this citadel so that they can blow up the generator or whatever, that kind of thing. But yeah, I've, I've heard of people doing that before. I've not really done it, but yeah, absolutely. Tabletop Titans is a couple of Kickstarters for pop-up terrain tiles. Maybe that's what I was thinking about. Were they at LVO? Somebody was L LVO. They had a booth and they were showing off pop-up terrain. And they Tabletop Titans might be the right words. Um, let's see here. Only one new mini in the whole pack. From, well, there's a couple. Well, I mean, I suppose in depending on the side. Yeah, like... There's a new Undead and or a Tomb King, and there's a new Bretonian. Is that it? There's only just one of each? I think that might be right. Dragonfire, have a good day. Absolutely. But yeah, um I don't yeah, I just it's I've had people ask me about the old world thing, and I just it's not for me. Um it's also incredibly dense, like the book. Like, there's 150 to 200 pages of rules, not just like, like, sometimes you get used to the GW books where you're like, okay, well, there's about 60 pages of rules. The rest of it's all fluff and, you know, pictures of pretty models and stuff like that. And there's still fluff and pretty models in that book because that book is, is monstrous. But there's also, from what Vincent told me, something between 150 to 200 pages of just rules. That is more rules than I want, just frankly. You know what I mean? Like, just no thank you. So, um, yeah, I don't know that it's, uh, you know, unless it's like the only book you need, you know, then, okay. Like if that was the only book you needed to play the old world, then you'd be like, okay, well, that's a big thick book and there's 150 pages rules, but that's the only book I'm ever going to need, but it's not, you're going to also need a book for each of the armies or whatever. And then there's a bunch of other junk and it's just, it's GWB and GW. You need a codex, you need a supplemental codex, you know, all that kind of jazz. Like back in the old days. And 2018, in the far-flung uh, Halcyon days of 2018, when you wanted to play Kill Team, you bought the Kill Team book. It had everything you needed in it. It had the rules, and it had all the armies in it that came out at the time. And then they added stuff, but, you know, still. And then when 2021 came along, they were like, well, let's not do that again. And then they made you buy the book with the rules and the book with the stats, which was, you know, again, unsurprising. Um, so if, yeah, if the... Uh, 
Old World book was the entirety of everything you needed, then I'd be like, okay, cool. But 150 pages, and then you also need other stuff? No, thanks. I'm I'm good. Thanks for another couple hours of hobby chat and inspiration. Absolutely, absolutely. Eagerly, eagerly awaiting the arrival of my Acid House terrain Kickstarter set for Judge Dredd. Nice. My library's miniature games are all set up in the same timey-wimey sci-fi setting. Sure, that makes sense. You ever played Stargrave or Five Parsecs from Home? If so, any thoughts? I like them both. Yeah, I um, Five Parsecs is obviously very solo-oriented for the most part, and I like that. Um, I think I like Stargrave a little bit better, and I don't know if you can play it solo. I mean, you probably can. I mean, you can play anything solo if you believe in yourself, but I don't know if there's like a solo add-on or something that you buy or you download. Um, I should look into that. But um, but yeah, no, I mean, it's uh, I think they're both like really good games. I feel like Stargrave is a little bit more. I feel like it's a good bridge between going from. Uh, like RPGs to 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 war games, whereas five par six, maybe not as quite as much, but they're both pretty good for that, I think. So, yeah. Happy every other Sunday. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, folks, I've got to uh, receive a whole bunch of plastic terrain, 3D printed terrain for my friend Dave and pay Dave for said terrain. And uh, and then we've got uh, lunch and then we've got uh, birthday shenanigans to go to for a good friend of ours. And um, so maybe I'll get to do some painting or whatever a little bit later this afternoon slash evening. We'll see. <clears throat> but yeah, so I want to thank everybody for coming by today. I appreciate it. I hope that you had a, a good time just listening and hanging out, uh, relaxing, or maybe you were painting and hobbying or building or whatever while you were doing it, or you're, I don't know, cleaning your kitchen or whatever you like to do. Um, we'll be back again in two weeks. So yes, I will be back in two weeks. Uh, next Sunday, I will be uh, going to Louisville. Uh, but the Sunday after that, I'll be back from Louisville. So then every other Sunday will be fine. But if you're a Twitch watcher, if you watch me on Twitch, uh, you'll see me on Monday and you'll see me on Friday and then you won't see me for the next two sessions because I'll be in uh, Louisville. So keep that in mind. The next two are good. After that, yeah, well, well, I won't be able to really stream on Twitch while I'm at uh, uh, in Louisville, Kentucky. Like they have Twitch there. Don't get me wrong. You could you could do it, but I won't have all my stuff with me. So, you know, that, that won't work. Um, there you go. So uh, thanks again to... Um, Thanks again to everybody for coming by, and I hope you have a good rest of your day, and uh, maybe get some hobby done, or take time, or whatever you want to do for yourself, and uh, we'll see you again soon. Uh, thanks for watching.